Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Bob. I'll be your dungeon master for tonight. We've got Supernatural 20 coming back on the channel. Are you excited? Ooh, let's oh, go. Yeah. yeah. So good to see everyone. Everyone looks great, rested after the new year, especially Steve and Andrew. Honestly, the two of you, you are glistening. <laughs> yeah, tell Andrew. us your secrets. Andrew in particular looks very relaxed tonight. Um <laughs> All joking aside, though, Steve was having some technical difficulties. Andrew um, had a, a new baby recently, so he won't be joining us. But uh, we do have Steph back and Michelle and Christian, and I'm so excited to play. So we're going to dive right in. We're playing another Arcane Library adventure. As usual, I will not tell you the title until after we're done, but it's a good one. So let's introduce the characters. Why don't we start with Michelle? Tell us who you're playing today. Hello, everybody. I am playing Bear, who is a deep gnome barbarian. Um, he's like, you know, he's an older dude, but he's still spry, young at heart. Um, I try to frame him as like a very wholesome being who likes to support his friends and is very, very blindly loyal. Um, he's also like a lifelong fan of Dobby, who is legendary in some <laughs> gnome communities. Um, so Bear will be sad because Dobby is not with us today. Yes, that's right. So Andrew won't be here today, but that's actually okay because this is going to be a bit of a change of pace episode. I think you'll see pretty soon. Uh, we go to Christian. Tell us who you're playing. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm playing Azula, the shadow sorceress. Um, so yeah, my good friend Bolin, uh, <laughs> died last, rip. Last season, so, yeah. you know, that was last season spoiler. Sorry about that. We'll put a spoiler tag. Um, <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and yeah, so Zula's a completely kind of different character. She's a little bit more aggressive, um, a little bit more, um, fearless, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, and obviously, like you said, at the end of last season, one of the last two or three episodes was when Bolin died, and uh, you've been playing Azula since, and she's definitely had, uh, I think, a big effect on the group. Kind of was met, met as an adversary almost in that first episode, but now she yeah. is a yeah, part of the absolutely. team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, now part of the guild, the specialized guild that you are, these supernatural hunters. And speaking of someone who was new, in the finale of last season, you were uh, new. Steph, who are you playing? Yes, so my current character is Bork the Hork, um, sometimes <laughs> called Brock. He doesn't, he responds to either. We don't know. Uh, he, is, <laughs> um, he is a half orc rune fighter. So he looks more human than orc because, uh, so he's kind of like a little low key, but he's got all these ruins on him to try to help and um, both healing and fighting. So hopefully I've been pretty good so far not dying this season. So hopefully keep it on that trend. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> we'll see how you can fare without your, your two companions, your cleric ooh, and your wizard. So we'll see. But uh, I'm excited to play today. So let's let's dive right on in. Woo. So today's adventure is going to start a little differently. You're in your room at the... Beneath... Uh, I shouldn't say beneath. You're in your room at the Black Rose Inn. It's a newly opened inn, actually, within the last six months. Uh, has a new proprietor named Cecil, who is a half orc. You met him as you came into the uh, uh, to the to the tavern area, the first room when you entered tonight to get out of the rain. It's it's a bit of a, a stormy night, and you've been on the road. Obviously, you go from place to place with your guild. Uh, to inspect and investigate supernatural occurrences. And, uh, you know, most of your life takes you on the road. Long journeys, weeks could go in between each mission. And so this night, this uh, cold fall evening, you headed in for safety of the Black Rose Inn. And uh, Cecil, who was the half-orc proprietor, he's told you a little bit about it. You, uh, you walked in and you saw that there was a tavern full of patrons he works the bar and manages the guests um, he gave you a room up up in the second floor uh, but he was uh telling you a little bit about his his endeavors he's a former i guess you might say adventurer but really more of a he was a gladiator in his youth and you notice that above the hearth in the tavern is his spear and short sword above his shield that he those are his weapons of choice back in the day 
you shared some stories, swapped some adventure tales, and then headed up for the evening. And that's exactly when this adventure is going to start, as you hear a knocking, no, actually a pounding on your door as someone is crying for help. All of you would be sleeping at this point. It's about midnight, and... Whatever you'd be wearing, whatever you'd be, uh, you know, in for sleepwear is what you what you have on. So no armor, I would assume. Uh, maybe your weapons you might be able to quickly grab. But again, that pounding comes at the door. Help! Help! It's after me. What do you do? I I think I kind of like shoot up out of bed. I think I have like a fireball. Like I don't like the like the the cantrip. Like as if I was gonna shoot it, but it's just kind of glowing in my hand to like illuminate the room a bit yes um so that we all can see kind yeah. of initial reaction yeah so almost like you pop up like like an alarm and go to grab the light or it would be a <laughs> and the light turns on in the room <laughs> gotcha what about uh what about bear uh bear is going to um just like slowly open his eyes and be like man i just fell asleep <laughs> okay and then he reaches under under the bed and pulls out his axe and just kind of lumbers over and stands next to the door. All right. All right, let's do this. And I, <laughs> I ready up, or it's just like I, I bring my axe to a ready position and I'm ready to swing if if danger suddenly appears. Sure. I mean, the pounding is, is incessant. It's continuing. Help, help. Brock, what do you do? Um, I get up with Bear and go towards the door. Um, Bear is ready. Um, I look at him, be like, am I opening this? Waiting for a cue. Okay, then I open the door ready with my with my sword ready. Gotcha. So you got two, the, the two fighters are up front with their weapons drawn. And Azula, you've got light cantrip. You've also probably gotten out of bed, grabbed your spell components, and you're ready to go as well. Okay. Who flings open the door? Is it going to be uh, Brock? Yeah, it's me. Okay. All right, so you look to the group for confirmation, a nod, you open the door, and right before you is a small little girl, no more than seven years old. She has black hair, um, and she is looking at you all. She, you can see she's carrying a little doll in her hand, a little uh, raggedy doll, and she looks at you and she says, it's after me, please help. She's gonna get me, please. I look up at her and I say, who's she? Uh, I pull her in the room and close the door, if, if that's okay. Oh. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> all right, well, welcome to the room. And yeah. I, I close the door and then I, I whip out my immovable rod and I wedge it against the door and I click the button. So now the door is secured. Definitely is not gonna be open easily. So you secure the door with the, with the rod. You pull the little girl in. Again, like I said, she has dark hair and dark eyes. She's wearing a blue dress with a matching bow in her hair. And she also has that raggedy doll that she clutches to her chest. And she says to you all, It was a ghost! It was after me! It's coming! It's in the hallway! I just look disappointed as the, I, my fireball like hand just kind of fizzles out. And she's like, oh, it's just a girl oh, going to bed. <laughs> And when you say that, the reality of her story presents itself. A spectral figure flies through the door, passing right through the immovable rod. Everyone can see this ghost. This ghost has uh, bright green eyes, actually, that are obscured, obscured li lightly by her uh, long, dark black hair. You can see pale fingers reaching for the child. This horrifying visage before you um, will cause a madness check. Everybody give me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, boy. And then we're going to oh, go Lord. into close combat here, so we're going to do initiative as well if you want to do both rolls. Oh. We're off to a hot start. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Call out your numbers so I don't have roll 20 up right at this moment. I Azula got a wisdom of save of two. And an initiative of 17. That's a, that's, I mean, maybe the, you wanted the other way around, maybe. Yeah. I just... huh. Well, wait till you hear my numbers, Bob. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Let's switch it For on over to roll 20. For the wisdom save, I crit failed. Okay. And uh, for initiative, <laughs> I got a 22. 
<laughs> just like just like Christians, perfect. It's, you know, it's, it's nighttime. Know. And We're Steph, sleepy. what'd you get? Um, I got a um, an eight for wisdom. <laughs> I'm doing really awesome at so I failed that one. And give me one second for my initiative. Here we are. My initiative is fourteen. All right, awesome. Okay, so I've got Bear at 22, 17 for Azula, 14 for Bork, and we have uh, the creature, who I actually didn't roll for, but I'll roll for that in a second. Um, so just to describe the scene here, as this ghost comes in, you know, it's got that, like, almost like a... I imagine, like, the ring, you know, the ghost from the ring, where it's like that dark, wet hair just kind of oh, dripping man. over its face, bright green eyes kind of glowing from it, and it reaches out its hand towards the girl, and this freaks you all out. I mean, you weren't prepared for this. You were, you, I mean, maybe your your training and your 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 uh, your job has trained you for this, but you were sleeping moments before this. And when uh, this happens, you spring into action. Obviously, Bear, you're going to go first, uh, but it looks like everybody here has lost a madness point. So just mark that off. And if you're interested to know what our madness um, system is, you can check the link below in the description for our house rules. All right, start with you, Bear. What are you doing? Um, well, I suddenly am not sure if my axe will really do anything, because I, I saw how this ghost moved through the door. Um, but I'm going to at least give it a go. Um, so I'm going to swing with my axe. Uh, and uh, an 18 to hit. That will hit. Oh, okay. All right, we hit. Um, nice. And then, yeah, yeah, thanks. Okay, and then it, it I was holding it two-handed? Yeah, I would uh, assume so, yeah, because you're not even, you just woke up, so the only thing you have in your hands is your axe. Right, and my axe. So I, it looks like I do 13, or uh, 13 is what I rolled. I gotcha. don't know how that is processed. Yes, because it's a ghost, so do you, I forget, was your magic uh, axe magical? No, right? I don't believe so. No. So you get the sense that not all of it goes through. You get a like a tug of resistance, but a lot of it just kind of flails through the spectral figure. Mm. Um, but that's your action. I think you have another uh, attack, correct? You have double attack? Oh, snap. Uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, okay, cool, cool. And you're not raging, right? You're just doing normal attacks yet? I'm not raging yeah. yet. I Yeah, I, I'm too sleepy to rage. <laughs> Uh, maybe when I wake up a little more. There you go. Get some coffee. That'll rage. Exactly. That hits um, too, though, Michelle, with that 15. Oh, sweet. Okay. And then six. Okay. So, yeah. Yep. So 13 and then six. Got it. Perfect. So you get a sense, again, that half the damage has gone through. Um, you're obviously, your room is very small. I mean, it's it's a it's a room in an inn. So probably at the, at the widest, it would be, you know, 25 or 30 feet and it looks like there's two sets of double bunk beds that you've, um, the three of you, since it's only the three of you, you figure you can uh -huh. all fit into this one room. So maybe a 20 by 30 room with the double bunk beds, a drawer, a dresser, and then that's it, right? That's the room. All your stuff would be stored either in a closet or to the sides of your beds. Um, so it's very close. You can get to any position that you would need to in one move. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, and the two of you are at the door. Azula, you might be by your bed. Right. Let's go to... Azula, you're next with a 17. Um, great. So I'm I'm far enough away where I'm more than five feet, so I can do a... 100%. A, I'd say you okay. could be as far as 20, 20 feet from the door if you'd like. Perfect. So I'll have that firebolt uh, shoot out. Um, that's a 26 to hit. That'll hit. All right. So it should be... 11. 11. You total. connect for the 20, uh, excuse me, for the 11 fire damage. And did I forget, did you um, did you prepare that spell ahead of time? Were you readying an action? I forget. No, no I never really specifically said. I kind of just was like, okay. I, I created the fireball just as for light. It was not meant to be as like an, an attack initially. I see, so. okay. It was a light spell and you just had your like flame in your palm. Okay. Yeah, type of thing, yeah. Gotcha. All right, so now it is the creature's turn, unless you have anything else to do. Uh, no. That's right. it. Do I? Does it look like it took that full? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your your magic seems to have hurt it the full amount. I might right. shout just like use magic. Yeah, 
Exactly. And then the creature is going to act next. It just beats you out, Steph. Um, it's going to reach out its hand and and try to touch the girl. I'm going to roll something hidden from you. Well, I guess you can see my screen anyway, but you'd have to squint real hard to do it. Okay. So the creature, the ghost, reaches out, touching the girl right where her doll was kind of like hidden. She kind of shrugs away. And I know, Steph, you were right there. I'll actually let you take an attack of opportunity. This seems like a, a real uh, exposure to the to the ghost as it ignores you and kind of goes in to grab at the girl. Okay. Did I do that? 24. That'll hit too. And this is non-magical. I don't, I don't believe so. Um, okay. So let me... That do it. Oh, 13 slashing. Very nice. Okay. You do hit the ghost, but again, not all of it goes through, and it, it takes that attack and reaches and touches the girl. And at that, it kind of like moves more of its spectral figure and it goes right into the girl. The girl now, you can see immediately, just kind of looks at all of you. It's very calm. Kind of almost drops her doll to the floor and it kind of just hits onto her foot and kicks off right next to you, Bear. And the combat is over. Uh, I'm going to remove the immovable rod from the door <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to touch the doll. I'm going to kind of eye it skeptically. I kind of wish Dobby was here. <laughs> he would have been helpful. It, you can, can can we investigate the doll? Yeah, you, or... the combat just ceases and you look around and there's this girl. She seems very calm now. And she looks to all of you and just kind of looks and starts to move. She moves towards the door as if she wants to leave. This is weird, right? Like, uh, I, I, I don't know much about kids, but um, that that doesn't that doesn't seem right. Just like, hello, we saved your life. Um, I'm going to kind of move um, in between the kid and the door. Just like not touching her, just like seeing what she does. Hmm. If I'm able to. I don't know how much room there was. Yeah, you let her you let her open the door? No, no, I don't let her open the oh, door. I get like, sorry. between her and the door. Oh, you get between her. I gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, she'll yeah. she'll try. I mean she wants to leave. She has to move to the left, move to the right. Her face is expressionless now. She was once this terrified little girl. Now she seems super calm and she tries to reach for the door handle behind your back. Um, you you do, I'm not gonna make you roll anything. She, you're able to prevent her from doing so. Okay. Is the doll on the floor? Yep, the doll's on the floor. Uh, hey, you forgot your doll. She'll look back at you when you speak to her, but then give you a blank stare and just turn back towards the door again, trying to fumble and get through Steph's character. Uh. Is the doll glowing or anything? Like, can I investigate it? Yeah, go ahead. Give me a, either an investigation check or perception, depending on how what you want to do. If you're like trying to figure something out about the doll, if it's got some sort of mechanism. I'm gonna roll perception on the girl to see because sure. she's like right in front of me. If I see anything weird. Ooh. Oh, I, I crit. Yeah, I rolled a five, so the doll's a doll. <laughs> yeah, you notice though the doll has a little, like, you know, like a you know, like in Toy Story, Andy writes Andy at the bottom or something like that. Yeah. Um, this this doll has the word, the name Nell at the bottom, like on the like on the leg or something. It was carved into the uh, or sewn into the whatever the stitching would be. It says Nell on it. Okay, um, I um credit with my perception on the girl itself. Yeah, I mean you give her a you give her a thorough inspection. You look behind her ears. You you know you make you look kind of pull down her eyelid and and then you look and she seems <laughs> so normal except for the fact that she's just got no emotion she is not talking and she just wants to keep pushing to the door guys i got um, nothing do we follow her maybe let yeah. her go wherever <clears throat> yeah i'm gonna pick up the doll and give it to her and say no take your doll okay she uh we'll we'll grab it if you like put it in her hand 
Otherwise, yeah. she won't really care for it. But she'll take it if you put it there, and then she'll open the door and begin to walk out into the hallway. And this is one long hallway that leads to a staircase that you came up to get to the floor, which leads down back into the tavern area. And she starts walking towards the stairwell and the tavern area. You might see a couple of other patrons of the inn, you know, sleepy-eyed and now awakened by the noise, look out. And they'll watch you as you're processing down the hall with this little girl. Before she gets too far, would it be weird if we put a rope around her? <laughs> Your little kids need a leash. A little leash, yeah. Are you True. supposed to put a we... leash on her? I mean, I I've seen it. I've seen it this month, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I guess, like, as nicely as I can as this half work on this little child, uh, put a rope around her like a leash. And j just follow her. <laughs> okay. And people look at me, I'm like, don't worry, I'm just letting her go outside to do her business. Don't, don't look over here. Taking her for a walk, nothing to see here. <laughs> um. <laughs> okay. So you, you you put a rope on her and, and walk her down like a leash, kind of like on a backpack or something. How do you... You said you attach yeah. her which way? Um, I just... I have it like around her waist. I assume she's not like... She doesn't sound like she's fighting me if I'm pulling down her eyelids with that earlier. So just like around her waist and like a slip knot, like a... Uh, like cattle style, I guess. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. So you, you're you're kind of walking the girl down me. the steps. Yeah, you get some weird eyes from the patrons as they're unsure of what to do if this is their business or should they be intervening. But again, they see these you three adventurers heading down. By the way, um, do you uh, are you gathering your items? Are you putting on armor? Oh, I would think. I, yeah, I mean, I would have. I wouldn't have left the room without it. So. But... That's fine. That's fine. Um, Bear, you don't wear armor, do you? I do not. Okay, but I so... would have like picked up my equipment and yeah. thing, anything I had lying around. That I makes would have sense. It before leaving. That makes sense. And Azula, same to you. Uh, do you wear armor? Christian, do you wear? Yeah, armor? I do. But I feel like I would be kind of wearing something. I think I'm wearing like light armor. It feels like it's not something super heavy. Okay. So then, would you don the armor at this point? Because you wouldn't be sleeping in your armor. Right, yeah, I would. I'd probably grab it and put it on as we're walking. Okay, so perhaps before leaving and putting the leash on the girl, you all don your armor, get your things, and you start to head out. And the the girl, probably if you were to take some time, minutes to like prepare, she would grow frustrated, Steph. And as you tie the rope onto her, and she starts to... You know, you, you start to, like, prepare for leaving the room. I would actually say, though, that uh, she'll fight you a bit. Nothing you need to roll for, but she's going to, like, try to do her best to push you, to restrain, to pull on that rope. And you real she'll, she'll eventually realize that she can't do it, but she'll try anyway. And then when you finally open the door, she'll, like, rush out. And she's trying to run down this hallway, if that's the case. Is there any Man, difference I've, in the way I've you... Felt um, I mean, I've fought kobolds before. I know what I'm doing. I just like, she's fussy. I just put her under my arm until we're ready to go and then okay. let her go on the leash. Okay. So you <laughs> start walking down the hallway with the leash and uh, it's at this point that you gain those those eyes, people looking at you as they peer out their doors. They're, you know, they, cre they crack open their doors to look at what's going on. And then uh, about halfway through the hallway, the little girl kind of just stumbles and then falls to her feet. Give me a perception check, uh, Steph, because you're you're watching her and you're you're kind of walking her down. Yeah, sure. Ooh, seven. Yeah, not you, too well though. Okay. She'll turn back to you and she'll look and she'll gain her senses and look around. Wait, where am I? What are we doing? Why have you tied me up? Right? Your name's Nell? Yeah, yeah, my name's Nell. How did you know that? Uh, it's on your doll. He was an educated guest. Uh, okay. Um, the ghost, where'd it go? Possibly in you? We don't know. In me? <laughs> yeah, I think maybe. I am not good with kids, and I, like, look around at the other two to see if anyone's gonna help me out here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's like a best friend in you. Maybe. She'll like cough and start to like, start to uh, wheeze and hyperventilate. What do you do? 
You got a friend in you. <laughs> I try to sing to her to help her calm down. I'd be like, it's fine. You got us here. We're here to help you. So let's, what do you want to do? Where are you trying to go now? The ghost is gone. I don't know where I'm going. I was supposed to stay in my room. My mom and dad told me not to leave. But then the ghost oh. showed up. So which, I guess, let's go to your room. Which one is your room then? She can take you to a room. It's down the hall. I mean, there's no um, mystery here. She'll bring you right to it. The door is open because she flung it open and ran to your room um, just before, just minutes before. Um, there, It's a standard room like yours. Uh, there's a few beds, a dresser. Um, there's nothing of personal belonging other than like a small bag of hers and it has some, some spare clothes and an extra toy or two, but there's nothing in here. You scour this room and there is nothing in here. But the beds do look unmade and like somebody has slept in them. Um, she tells you that her parents said that they had to check downstairs for something and that they told me not to leave the room. Okay. Uh, what are your parents' names? We can go find, let's go find them since they're not here. That sounds like, that sounds like a thing. My dad's name is Victor, and my mom's name is Naomi. Naomi Victor, got it. Okay, why don't you come with us? Okay. You can hold my hand. We're still probably going to keep the rope around you, but that's fine. That's, that's for you. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. I'll trust you. Dorothy sh says she's scared, and she points to the little doll. But Mommy and Daddy told us to be brave. Okay. Oh. That's that's a good plan. So I guess <laughs> um, I guess we lead her downstairs to try and find the parents. Sure. Um, I'm holding her hand, but I still have the rope. Like I said, like it's it's like those kids at Disney where they got the the yeah. stretchy thing on the arm. Yeah, wrist. a little backpack leash. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Uh, anything you want to do, either Azula or Bear? I'm kind of muttering to myself. I bet Dobby and Yagni are doing something cool right now. Or babysitting a kid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you uh, have, you have bear. Go ahead. What are you doing? Oh, I I will I will kind of put my axe back, and then I'll walk along Bork, and I'll I'll look at Nell and say like Nell, if you'd like, I can hold your hand while we walk. And I I see like she's being carried, so I'm like we can hold hands if that would help you feel better. Dorothy would like that. She says. Oh, and okay. And then I carefully take Dorothy's little paw or whatever appendage she has. I don't... Yeah, it's a it's a rag doll, so maybe it's human. It's human, oh, okay. human doll. All right, I'll take Dorothy's little hand and be like, <laughs> okay, Dorothy and I are holding hands. Let's go. All right, so you head downstairs into the tavern room of the Black Rose, and uh, it's here where you realize... This dark room that you were that you remember from before, this tavern room that was full of people in the hearth, is drastically different in the dark. Uh, there's no light source here, so if you have to have light, like Azula, you're a uh, human, right? Yep. You have light spell still cast? Are you using that? Um, I don't have the light spell. I was just kind of... Oh, using like your flame in use, your hand. Yeah, I was just... I have a cantrip fireball or fire, whatever, fire blast. Fireball, so yeah. I just I assumed I could just make my hand glow, or at least yeah, that's, that's fine. You like gathered like. it in your hand, prepared to attack it, and yeah. Yeah. So, so we do need light source then for you if you need it. Can I can I use that as my light source? I wouldn't say that it would be constant. Like it would be a, a like a flash in the pan sort of thing. So Got it. no, it wouldn't. It would it would a pinch when you need just a a brief light to see what's going on, but it would only it would only last for a split second. Oh, okay. We probably have uh, a torch in the room we can take. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say, is there any lanterns or anything yes. on the wall? Yeah, yeah you could so take I'll a lantern. Just, yep. Okay. I'll just light it. So, the downstairs area is much different in the dark. So at least get a sense of it that it's different. You head down and you can see uh, this once you get in. The chimney has a is is completely empty at this point, right? There's no fire in it. It's been extinguished. And you can hear a wind kind of blowing through that chimney, causing a low growl, growl excuse me, throughout the entire room. Once you get down to the bottom of the steps, you can see the entirety of the room and see Cecil, the owner of the Black Rose Inn, standing rigidly behind the shadowy bar. He polishes a glass, staring into the darkness. 
What do you do? I I quietly uh, walk kind of in front of him, like not directly in front, but maybe like 15 feet away in front of him in the darkness. And like, I can see because I have dark vision. Yeah. I'll like wave my hands at him and see if he reacts or responds to me waving my hands. No, no reaction. He doesn't break. Um, well, Cecil's a half orc like me, so I guess I go over there and be like, Hey man, I got a kid. Have you seen people who need a kid? You finally bring uh, Eliza into the room, and Cecil will put down the glass slowly, carefully, drop his rag to the side, and spring into action. He'll jump over the countertop and run in for a charge. We're going to roll initiative again. Oh man, these people are so weird. (laughs) Let's see. We chose a weird place to stay the night, guys. Did Dobby pick this place? What happened? It's had great reviews. The Black Rose? I don't know, man. Oh, Bear, you and I, we are the same. Oh, all we all you. got 16. You... Oh, that's oh! funny. <laughs> you all got a 16. My goodness. What are the odds? Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, I actually do have a battle map for this, so I'm going to switch us to the mat. Let's see. How do I do that? Should Here we all go. just roll again? No, 16 is yeah, great. Can... You could choose your order, actually, is what that means. Oh. Okay. Okay. So move your tokens to where you think they would be. I'll hide uh, our friends here who are not with us. I'd probably, I'd probably go. I'd probably be in the back. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you you said you were in like you know positioning yourselves near Cecil and obviously Azula. You can put yourself put yourself in the room. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Yeah, wherever you'd like to be, and then we'll start the initiative there. Everybody feel good where they are? Mm. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to put Cecil on top of the bar as when he jumps, that's when the uh, combat's going to start. Uh, who's going first in your group? Um, I can go. Azula. Yeah, go for it. Then, yeah. who, then who next? Steph, do you have a preference? Um, I'm ambivalent. I'm, I'm near him, and I've got the kid. I don't know if I want to like stand back because i got the kid with me. So, Bear, do you want to go? And then if he tries to come at me closer, I'll do that. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, that's okay. a great plan. Great. So I've got Azula, Bear, and Brock. And uh, it is your turn, Azula. All right. I'm going to go with a Ray of Frost at our guy there, a 17. 17 will hit. All right. So that's going to do six cold damage, and his movement is... Dropped to 10, I believe. Oh, it's reduced by 10 feet. Yes, exactly. The Ray of Frost will do that to him. So, yeah, yeah that's perfect, actually. That's good, because you want him to slow him down anyway. All yeah. right, so he'll uh, he'll take that hit and take the six gold. And then uh, it's going to be your turn, Bear. Okay, so I am going to, I guess, jump up on the table. Uh, and... If I pull out my axe, is that an action? No, you can retrieve oh. an item from like a sheath or your back or something like that as part of your your turn, a free action. All right, sweet. So I'm going to jump up on the table. I pull out my axe, and then from here, I'm going to leap between Cecil and Bork. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'm going to say, don't touch my friends. I'll take my axe and swing at his knees. My my usual target. Uh, okay, gotcha. what do we got? We got a thirteen. Thirteen is not uh no not gonna hit him. Okay, do I get a, a second attack? You do. Yep. Okay. Wait, I try again, and we get a twenty six this time. Twenty six will definitely connect. All right, fantastic. Getting those kneecaps for eleven damage. <laughs> All right, awesome. And this definitely will go through as he is. You know, he's merely a, a man, a half-orc. So this will uh, go through unlike the ghostly uh, apparition you fought before. So 11 damage goes through, and do you have anything else? You're, you're not raging, are you? Uh, no, not at the moment. 
All right, Steph. Um, mm, I still have the girl with me. Can I keep my attack ready and just be like, can, um, and just try to talk to him? Sure, you could. Be like, because there's no one else in the room that we've seen. I just want to be like, what are you doing, man? Like, you okay? Yeah, he's not going to respond back to you. He looks similar to the expression that uh, Nell had given you in the room. The kind of blank, expressionless, just that face that is uh, hmm. focused on what they're doing. Okay. Um, I'm going to... Hmm. Okay, I want to try to hit him, but and I'm going to throw some things. I don't want to get any closer. And I'm going to try to wound, not kill, because I have a feeling that he's not in his right mind. Um, I think I can... I've got a couple... I thought I had throwing. Let's give me a second here. Go ahead. While you're looking up your uh, stats, I do have a artwork of Cecil. Hmm. I'll show it to you. There you go. Uh, he actually, when you met him, I mean, he has, uh, he's dressed well. He gives you, uh, he was he was talking to you with the utmost of manners, and he was very polite and showed you his all his collection of, of weapons and gear that he had, uh, uh, you know, gained over the years of fighting in the gladiatorial rings. So yeah, he, he was like a nice a guy. Distinguished gentleman. Very distinguished. Can't yeah. wait until I tell you his accent. <laughs> All right, so Steph, what do you got for us? Um, I got a fourteen. So that will know. hit. That will hit. Okay. That will hit. In here, that was for eight damage. Like I said, it was to wound, not kill. If possible. I gotcha. So you slash him for eight with a hand axe, or you throw it at him, I should say. And do you have any other things? I know you might. Do you have another hand axe or no? I don't know if I want to use them all because I only have a couple of them on me. Okay, so I so think that's that's my turn. Happy now. with one. Yeah, you try to like hit him yeah. in the leg or a non-vital organ. Yeah, I just try to knock him out of out of it. That's that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Is knock him out of the state if gotcha. there's any way. Because I saw that the girl when she tripped, she was knocked out yeah. of it. So. Yeah. No worries. So, okay, so what he'll do is he's on the bar. He'll hop down and uh, you know get on the same. Well, I guess not the same level. Not eye level with bear but at least on the same floor as bear and grab one of those stools and he'll try to bash it over your head it's an improvised weapon so you won't get his proficiency with it but he's pretty powerful let's see how this goes bear i need you to do me a favor actually can you yeah. roll me a percentile dice uh the d100 interesting okay i wonder will this send to roll 20 did it send it over? Yep. Oh, yeah. Nice. I got a 74. 74. Can you roll it again? Yes, I can. Nine. And a nine. Okay, so here's what happens. He'll swing at you for the first attack. It's going to whiff. It's going to go right over your head. The second one, though, will come down on your back, and it does do some damage here. Here's the damage total. The total is going to be seven plus. Let's see here. So it's going to be 12 points of damage as a stool hits you on your back. And then okay. he's going to take his third attack, and this time the stool is actually going to shatter over your head as it hits you. It's still going to do damage, and here's the amount of damage. It's a total of, oh, the exact same number, 12. So you take 12 and 12, and then that's going to be the end of his turn as the stool shatters. Um... Now he has just, like, nothing in his hands, right? So he's going to spend his next turn. He looks around the room, again, expressionless. He looks around the room and sees above the fireplace his shield, spear, and sword. He's going to make a run for it. And he can only have 20 feet of movement because of Azula. But he'll leave your square. If you'd like to take an attack opportunity as a reaction, you can. Oh, oh yes, I would. All right. Let's do it. A 19. That'll hit. Roll for it. All right. Okay. Cool. And uh, five damage. Five? Okay, gotcha. Wait, okay. How, how is it 11 for one hand and five for two? Because you rolled a four. Sorry, you rolled a, uh, a seven out of your D8 for the uh, one-handed. And it looks like you rolled a one for your oh. two-handed slashing. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thanks. You gotta love it. But he's headed towards the fireplace right here. You can see immediately once his eyes recognized the uh, weapons in the room, the stool being kind of useless, he's running towards the fireplace. Uh, he only moved 15 more feet because he was running out of his speed. All right, it's your turn, Azula. Back to the top of the order. I am going to try Ray of Frost again. Okay. To keep slow, to slow him down again. Sure. Uh, that's going to be a, ooh, a 10. I don't think that will hit. It does not hit. You know that your oh. 12, I think, was your first attack? Yep. Did not hit. and Or, sorry, it did hit. Somebody had an attack of, like, 12. It didn't hit. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna move closer. One, two, three. Closer, you brave sorceress. <laughs> Trying to get close. Okay, that's it. Okay, all right. So you head there. over to the middle of the room. You hide behind one of the tables. Get between that table and him. <laughs> yeah, and then we go to bear. Uh, okay. Um, I have an idea, but I don't know if it's feasible in one turn. Can I run it by you real quick? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm, I'm standing behind him. Like I imagine he's facing the fireplace. So I'm behind his back and I'm thinking that I would like to run and tackle the backs of his knees. Mm. Um, <laughs> thinking that that may, might make him fall. Um, and then if he's on the ground after that, if and if I have space, I'd like to take out my immovable rod and pin him down, like, by his neck. Would that be feasible within one turn? Not within one turn, but you could definitely make a athletics check to try to push him down, like, to trip him. That would be doable. Okay. And then in your next turn, you can use the action of using the item to pin him down. Uh, you make opposed athletics checks to do to do both of those those things. Okay. Okay. Then yeah, I'll I'll try to trip him at least. Okay, so give me way. yeah, give me your athletics check and uh Okay. He is bigger than you. You're a size small, correct? Yes. Okay. I am little. I got a fourteen. A fourteen in total? Yeah. He gets a he gets a twenty seven. Oh my god. Remember, he fought in the gladiator pits. Yeah. Brutal. It's he, like I run into a wall and I fall back on my butt. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, <laughs> you stop right there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, it's like running into a linebacker. He just doesn't move. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't even flinch. So um, then if that's my action, do I not get an attack? Like, is that my turn now? So if I'm not mistaken, actually, a push or a trip or something like that, can be done as replacement for one of your attacks. Like you can grapple as one of your attacks. So I'll I'll let you take one attack action against him. Okay, cool. Thanks. One attack, I should say, not action, whatever. But right, right. So a thirteen does that hit? Oof, does not. So we oh, know the number my. now, everybody. It's a fourteen. Oh, what a turn! Okay, a I tried. Yeah. All right, Bear. Okay. Well, that gave us some knowledge, at least. He's too strong to tackle, and uh, 14 is what you need to hit him. So, not all that bad. All right. You got this, Bork. Bork, you're okay. up. Okay. Um, I'm still holding this kid, actually. I think that's why I was only like, throw, throw it once. Um, I'm going to throw the kid down in the chair right in front of me. Gotcha. And then move. I'm assuming that my movement is slightly delayed because throwing her down um <laughs> that sounds so mean i'm sure she's fine um and then going to hit him because he's he's beaten up bear here yes so that's not cool bash uh, bear with a stool i got 19 that'll hit and nine. nine slashing damage and i still try not to kill him yeah yeah i get the it's sense okay. that you're trying to subdue rather than kill like I'm not, I, I'm a half orc. I'm not a monster here. Yes, of course. So. As as is he. <laughs> All right. So we go to uh, his turn. Uh, he's going to leave again. Not really aware enough of to to leave without, you know, being cautious and disengaging. He's going to just run towards the fireplace to grab his weapons. You could take a tax opportunity if you'd like. 
<sighs> I continue to flail uselessly. Uh, 11 damage. That'll hit. 11 damage. Very nice. So, uh, you slash at him. He runs away. He'll take his double move to go there, and he'll simply just grab one weapon off. Uh, we'll say he grabs the short sword off the mantle, and that's his turn, because he doesn't have any more actions. So, we'll go to you, Azula. Um... Okay, I'm going to cast... I'm going to cast Web on him and kind of just pin him up against... Now that he's up against the wall, he has his stuff. Very nice. Can you put gonna, the description in the chat? I yes. believe... Yeah, just go to the description part of the top right when you Oops. look at the spell. Yep. The display. Um, I believe he has to take the save on his turn. Not now, right? I believe so, yes. Okay. Oh, okay. that didn't do it. Now, it should be in the description of the spell, top right on D&D Beyond, and then you could put display in VTT, I think. Yeah. Oh, yep. There you go. There we go. Yeah, creature strain. So, uh, at the start of your next turn. No, no, that's for you. It's each creature starts its turn in the web. That's it. Okay. Yeah, so, so it's stuck there. Where do you want the web's perimeter? Um, I want it so that he's pinned up against the wall and I guess it can go out as far as he can and he's sort of in the middle so that he has to spend a good chunk of time trying to get out. So like this you would say? Yeah. Or maybe this? Yeah. Yeah that's okay. good. Alright so the web appears and the sticky substance coats all the tables and chairs in the area and kind of connects all the way to the fireplace uh, obscuring what's inside. I believe it does completely block sight, right? From you all? The webs are difficult to range. Lightly obscure their area. Ah, okay. Lightly obscure. So you can see through it, uh, but he's going to have some bonuses if you're trying to hit him with ranged attacks. And just remember, that is flammable. That that web. Alright. That's the end of your turn? Yes. Okay. Bear, you're up. Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, now there's webs all over the place. Um, hmm. I think that I would like to, uh, so if I walk on the web, I also can't really move, right? Yeah, it's difficult terrain. For everyone. Okay. Hmm. Um, okay, then I will, I'm going to put my axe down, take out my javelin. You know what? Today I'm a gnome throwing a javelin. Why not? And the javelin's like twice as long as my entire height. So it's a, it's a little clunky, but you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm doing what I can here. So I, I heave it. Like I take a running start and I heave it. Um, and I toss this, this long javelin. Uh, tw 25 to hit. Wow, wow. Even, even with the obscurement. <laughs> yeah, you connect. Go ahead, roll oh, your damage. Oh, oh yes. Um, and we, we do nine piercing damage. Wow. Awesome. Okay, Let's got go. it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so you throw that in, and it just threads the needle through the web and gets lodged into his, like, his shoulder or something like that. And you can hear the the scream cry out. Um, yeah, this is the that's first for emotion. The stool thing. Sorry. That's for the stool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's the first thing I think uh, you've heard from him. Steph, it's your turn. Okay. Um. Can't do much. I'm gonna try to throw my hand axe. I have to move closer though. Right. So. You'd have to get right to the edge, I think, to be able to. Yeah. Reach. Yeah. I have 20 foot, so I'm not gonna like touch it. But I'm going to go right up to that edge, try to look through it. I'm going to look back at uh, Azula and go, what the hell, man? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and throw and throw a hand axe through there. Let's see if I hit. I don't know. Do I have disadvantage on this? or? No, I'm going to give him a higher AC. Okay. Oh, yeah, I don't hit. It's an eight. It's like stuck two feet in front of me. 
I've been like, I don't, I don't know what this is. <laughs> All right, so uh, so you miss, it. yes, obviously the eight will miss, and uh, we're gonna just uh, pause for a quick moment, okay? Let's describe the scene here. So Steph, Bork mm-hmm. just throws that axe and it gets stuck in the web. No, uh, no avail with the attack. But as I mentioned before, when Cecil was struck with the javelin from Bear, you heard that cry come out. And that ghostly creature of the woman with the long, dark hair and the green glowing eyes, she flies through the web. Again, un, you know, uninterrupted by the, the web's uh, stickiness. She'll just fly right through and kind of pass through you as well and head this way to the northern area of the bar and go down underneath the floorboards. What? Am I like slime, like Ghostbusters? I'm I'm guessing Cecil is like looking normal now. Cecil's like using the web as like a brace for himself so he doesn't have to carry all of his weight. I'm gonna oh dispel boy. the the web. He'll slump to the floor and fall down. He's not dead or unconscious. He just looks rather beaten up from all of you. And that'll be the end of the combat. Okay. Wow. Um, I guess I'm the closest to him, so I'm going to go over to him. Not within reach, but close. I'll be like, hey, man, you okay now? Oh, I'm very good. Very good. Yes. Oh, my head. Feels like I've been hit with a sledgehammer. I mean, I, I know that maybe I don't I don't know what have done that, but you were probably possessed by a ghost. Does this uh, happen often? A ghost, you say? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What What's the last thing you remember? Well, the last thing I remember is hearing a loud noise coming from up up in the rooms. I was getting out of my room to see if everything was OK. I walked here into the tavern and then. Well, I feel like I've been run over by a carriage. Am I bleeding? What is all this? I'll uh, I'll come over and be like, Oh, man, how did this javelin end up in you? Let me help you with that. I've, I've told you no rough housing. The Black Rose does not tolerate that. Oh, man, you should have seen yourself, though. I mean, all those splintered bar stools over there are from you, man. Good job. Have... You must have been an impressive warrior back in the day. I must have... Yes, I went into a sort of a rage. A, a, bl- a blackout. Y- yeah. Can, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Is, how can... Is there a floor? Is, is, there, a, do you, is there a basement here? Um, that ghost went underneath the floorboards. D- did you say ghost? Am I hearing this correctly? Yeah, that ghost was all up in... You know, your business. I, I do apologize <laughs> if I caused any harm. He sees bears probably got, you know, splinters sticking out of him and everything. He goes, I'd much rather bake a pie than break a face. Well, I'll yeah. pick you up on that pie later, but <laughs> there, we need to find this ghost. Now, now the ghost, you say, yes. If there was a said ghost and it did possess me and flew under the floorboards, well, there's only uh, one place to go. I have a storeroom beneath the bar. Okay, I guess we should... Do you mind if we check it out? Of course. uh, I find this all a bit perplexing, though. Why would a ghost have shown up? I've been the proprietor here for six months. Who owned it before you? Oh, some some company, a, a, a lease company. They had... The structure had been unoccupied for many years. Hmm. One of those shell companies, those shrill shrill companies. Shrill shrill. Got yes, it. it was a shrill shrill. Yes, <laughs> quite. Can I, can I describe what I what the ghost looked like to see if it r- rings a bell? The sure. woman, long hair. Um, I forgot how many more details that we. It was green eyes. Know. Green eyes. Uh, like well, that, wetish hair. Well, that does seem sa- rather concerning. You see, when I bought this place, I did a little research. Uh, you know, nothing. Everything seemed to check out. 
It wasn't in poor shape or anything, and just like a little elbow grease would fix it up, so I used all of my life savings to purchase this. But uh, there was a little concerning history. You see, there's a legend uh, that uh, perhaps a murder was committed here in the inn f some 50 years ago. Hmm. But that Perfect. seems strange. I've uh, there's been no there's been no cases of ghosts here in the inn, and as I said, it's been six months since I've owned this place. Haven't seen a uh, one spectral figure. Can you tell well, us about the murder 50 years ago? What have you heard about that? I don't know much about it. It's just some sort of uh, yeah, a murder of a woman who searches the halls for her daughter. Oh. I mean, that sounds very specific. Um, oh, the little girl's back in the chair. Um, what? There's a little girl here. And he looks over and you'll see behind the, under the table pops out Nell's head. She's like, hey. I'm here. Have you seen her parents? I mean, I, f I feel that's that's what we came down here for. Ah, uh, yes. You you came with your mother and father, correct? Victor and Naomi. And she like nods. And, well, yes, yes. They uh they rented a room upstairs on the second floor, just like you. Probably uh two or three doors down. Uh, they weren't there when we checked for them. Shocking. Hmm. Well. I think we should go check out the yeah, store room. might be in the basement or storeroom. That would be trespassing, young lady. And she's like, I'm sorry. I didn't. I don't know. Well, now, now. Do you mind how um, how much damage has Cecil taken? Like, does he still look you decent? You did about 60 damage to him. Okay. So he's hurting. Yeah. Yeah, he's hurting, but I'm gonna be like, look, man, we're gonna check down there, but would you mind watching this kid? Like, you're pretty strong. Yeah, he'll... Gee, I, I don't know how much you charge for babysitting, <laughs> but, uh... Oh, if uh, there's a ghost know. at the Black Inn, then it needs to be... It needs to be ousted right now. Oh, you are in luck, man. We're we're a Supernatural 20. What? And, what and is a Supernatural 20? <laughs> uh, that's us. Is that a... I am not the talker of the group, man. You, you're missing Dobby. He's he's at a spa this weekend. Um, <laughs> we we deal with this kind of shit, and we are here for you. Well, consider your rooms complimentary. I perfect. <laughs> come come here now. I, they say I'm wonderful with children. And he'll like want Nell to come over to him, and he'll smile, and just his tusks and sharp teeth. He, he's like, makes a terrifying <laughs> face. But Nell trusts you because you saved her. So if you want him to watch her, she he will. Cecil will I, do that. I hand over the rope to him. Cecil Downing, my dear, <laughs> and he nods and looks at all of you and says, "She'll be in good hands." He has his shield, okay. spear. And his sword now sheathed, he's like ready to go. On to the storeroom. Yeah, he'll he'll go over to the bar and there actually if you move your tokens on the map, you can see that there is a like a, a, a hatch door here. Yeah, right there. Hmm. Um, it does have a lock on it, however, it looks as though the lock has been picked and is open. Like a padlock, open. Um before we go down. Um, Bear, I only have, like, one thing of healing per short rest. Are you okay mm -hmm. before we go down? Uh, yeah, I have... I'm okay for now. I'm okay. at just over half, um, but... I, you also I haven't I raged, either, too, so... That's true, I haven't raged. I guess I still haven't had my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> totally fine. Just letting you know that I do have, but it's only once. So, yeah. like, when, when you, before you go down, hit me up. Um. <laughs> okay, we're, thank you, thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. life's tough without our cleric. Yes, it yeah. is. Our yeah. <laughs> and then also, you can hide behind me. I'm I'm not that squishy, so if you need to, feel free to use me as a shield. So. Thank you, friend. You are so noble, so gracious. All right. Okay. So, healing is situated, not healing yet, saving your one heal for, because you have the healer feet, correct? Yes, I've got healer healing. Yeah. So once per short rest, I can use the healer's kit. So um, I try to use it sparingly when we don't have our cleric, or when we do have our cleric and he goes down. Yes. Pretty hard. Exactly. So. <laughs> Yagnir tends to do that. 
sometimes. Just go down <laughs> real hard, like bad <laughs> luck, and then just down. Yeah. Especially right. if you whip out one of those jellies. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, know my, no. you know I love my oozes. <laughs> oh, ooze. Yes, that's what it is. Well, they're all, they're, some are called jellies. Some are called uh, puddings. So, you know, it makes sense. Tasty. Nice. All right. So let's move our, let's move our screen. I'm going to move us to another view. Should be good. Tell me if you can see your characters before I switch us over on the actual screen. Um, Mine's still black yes. right now. Really? It's no, bottom sure. right corner. It's like only bottom a little right. bit. Oh, got it. Thank you. No worries. Okay. I'm going to switch us over on the roll 20 view here, and then everybody will be able to see you. Here we go. All right. So you head down this ladder in the corner of the room, this southwest corner of the room, southeast corner, excuse me. You head down to the storeroom, and this is, you know, nothing here uh, kind of sets off any sort of warnings to you. You're, I know you're all heightened senses right now. You're ready for anything. Uh, but you can see barrels filling this damp, lightless basement. There's sacks of grain and all different sorts of foodstuffs. Uh, some supplies for the bar area. And there's very little light. The only light would be that from the bar area in the tavern. Now it's lit up. Cecil is remaining up there. Uh, he'll, he'll be at the top and kind of guide you uh, as to what you might be seeing here. And he says... There's just a few foodstuffs here. Nothing of out of the ordinary, but you'll notice to the north there's a door. Yeah, you see that door there? I don't know how to get by it. In fact, when I bought this place, uh, I tried to open it, but it's been locked and it's sturdy, reinforced. I mean, I thought one day perhaps I'll break it down. The owners told me that there was a, some, some defunct cistern down below and it had nothing to do with the... Uh, servicing of the inn so i figured at some point when i had some extra money i'd i'd uh, perhaps explore it and, and i don't know maybe see if i can use the space for something but i haven't had the need nor the time to investigate it you'll have okay. to do something with that door Can anyone open a door besides pure force um i'm gonna go it's up here yeah, you might be able to see the glimpse of it under the lighting. It's right here. Okay, um, I'm going to do an investigation check to see if there's something I could, if I could do. Ooh. Oh, that's natural twenty. You, you check the handle and uh, it's unlocked. It looks as though oh. this lock has been picked as well. Okay, guys, it's unlocked. It's unlocked. Ready, what do you mean it's unlocked? <laughs> you hear Cecil from the top of this ladder. Uh, did you did you try pulling it when you're supposed to push it, or did, did you try pushing it? Which I mean, that happens to me uh, all the time. I've like, pushed, like, I've pulled, I've done many of that in my time. This uh, door was locked, locked up like a fort. Hmm. Then this might mean that somebody is already here, guys. I think we should try to keep quiet. Okay. All right. Well, I will take care of the girl. No, no need to worry. You just make sure you don't die on my premises. No, this other ghost is terrifying. I'll try not to hang with her. Right, okay, so you guys ready to go through? Good. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll take out the lighting here. You can open the door very, rather easily. And before you, you see a staircase descending down. Okay. Yep, move your tokens. And the first thing you'll notice in terms of your senses here is that it is rather dark. I think you have the lantern providing you some light. Uh, but the other thing you'll notice is the sound of water. As you descend the steps. Down here. Yeah, it's wet. You can see water rising from the darkness. A waist high brackish water fills a wide cavern with a low ceiling. A set of stairs uh, leads uh, up to a tunnel hewn into the rear wall. Above the tunnel, you can see a crude carving that says, Enter and cast death aside. Hmm. Hmm. Why do I have a feeling we're going to be going into that tunnel? Because we have to go in that tunnel. 
Uh, okay. Shall so you we? said this water is waist deep, you said? Yeah, it's waist deep and it fills the cavern. The ceiling is rather low, so I'd say that you probably could almost, especially you, uh, Brock, you're you're almost at the height of the ceiling. Okay. I rolled a three. I was trying to see if there's anything in the water before I make my way that way, but it just looks like water to me. Uh, it does not look just like water to you. You oh, peer into the, the water. <laughs> yeah, even with the seven. You peer into the water and you're looking to see if there's something in the murkiness, but you only see your reflection back at you. However, give me a sand, uh, a madness check. The You can see a uh, distorted version of yourself, a undead version looking back at you. 14. Wow. You fail. You take another point of madness. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to take note that that happened as, you know, looking at the water. So I'm like, let's... Yeah, I would probably mention, guys, try not to look in the water if you can. Would um, it be worse um, if I cast web again and we can kind of, like, crawl through the web to stay above the water? You you would like... know that that might not be feasible. Like, web no. might get you stuck in it. Okay. So... Got it. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it would like if we would. Ha okay. Yeah, you don't want to. You would. You wouldn't do that because you wouldn't want a chance that you then can't get out. Right. <clears throat> Especially you. Can't you. freeze the water, can you? I don't have anything to freeze. Um... Okay. Um, Borg, the water looks kind of deep. Can you give me a, a always back ride? Always my BFF. I throw him on my shoulder. Oh, or thanks. wherever you want to be. <laughs> what if we uh what if we grab oh, like one of the tables from upstairs and we can use it as like a boat or something? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that would fit through the hatch. <laughs> it's true. I think well it's um like my head's almost hitting the ceiling, so I bend down so um so Bear can be on top of me and I'd just be like, Look up, don't look down. Just don't look down. It's real scary. Because I'm already frightened, so all I right. I look terrified after looking in the water. Yeah. So Thank we you. we're, we're so all going to walk we're all going to walk in the water just looking up. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you you have bear on your shoulders, Brock, and uh Azula, you walk in, you know, it's waist high for you as well. Uh, and you just head north to the seemingly the only exit from this room, which is that stairwell. Uh, and again, there's that insignia or excuse me inscription on the wall that says again enter and cast death aside um question for you bob yes. um for because i remember the first one level of madness was just uneasiness the second one is frightened so it's really that just advantage on something no in the the newer uh the newer document we were mm -hmm. talking about we just simplified it to a role-playing scale so you know losing one point of madness is going to be my rather minor especially for a group like you but the more you go you kind of decide how to role play it it's the rejuvenating the points or regaining the points at the end is the method to get more um the the long-term madness chart to get more okay. long-term uh uh effects that would be in the in the in the healing part okay so okay yeah, it's your call on how you want to roleplay it. Okay, I've... so I'm definitely frightened of the water, guys. So in case you're... Yeah. Like, I, I'm in the water, but I hate it. Yeah. Like a little kid trying to take a bath. Yeah, the like... probably the fastest way to get out would be the best way, right? Yes, yeah. so I'm I'm cruising. All right. <laughs> With I'm... bear on my back. <laughs> I'm trying to comfort you. I'm like massaging your shoulders, kind of like, a, like a, when a cat <laughs> needs... Yeah, exactly. There, mm -hmm. there. I appreciate it. Yeah, I got you. All right, so you get to the stairwell and you get out of the murky water. Uh, nothing attacked you. You didn't have any sort of issue getting across it. It was just waist high water. Uh, but when you get to the edge and you finally get on a flat level, you can see in front of you that there's two paths. Sorry, three paths. One to the west, one to the east, and one north. The northern one might be the most obvious because it opens up into a rather large room. Uh, this seems to be a room of uh, some sort of study. There is a table with papers all scattered all about. Um, there are high-back chairs gathering around the table. 
the yellow parchment kind of uh, glistens as you can see there is some sort of a fireplace in here and it is lit or at least a, a some sort of a what is that just want to make sure I'm not giving you the wrong information but it's some sort of lighting yeah there's I'm a fire going pit. to peer around like very nervously into the room without going into it too much I'm going to roll perception to see if I see anything funky Sure. Move yourself into the room. All right, that's a 17. I'm like right here at the edge of the room. Yeah. Yeah, I got okay. you. So, yeah, from the edge of the room, you can see that long table, yellow parchment mm -hmm. scattered on it. It doesn't look as though the the materials here have been used in quite some time. However, it does look a bit disturbed, like perhaps there's coatings of dust and now that some of the papers have been lifted or moved, reveal like rectangular areas that have no dust. You know what I mean? Okay, yeah. So things were definitely taken. Yeah, things were moved uh, recently, but the actual things have not been touched probably for, you know, quite some time to collect that amount of dust. Okay. Um, so I guess I'm going to go over to the table and see if I can read any of the documents or any of the things to see what is going on here. Yeah, I'm going to have you make an arcana or religion check. It's up to you, depending on what you'd like. The religion can be used wisdom instead of intelligence. Or arcana. Oh. Um. Okay. Where's, so I just where's have, Dobby I or Yagnir when you need them? Yeah, right. Hey. Um. Okay. So that's a 17. Who needs... Who needs a priest when you can read? <laughs> I, I mean, I I know exactly what these are. I've seen them before. It's a you you actually might have based on your care. I know that we <laughs> met in Ravenloft, remember? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, it's a vampirism ritual. Ugh, I hate these guys. <laughs> However, because you rolled so high, you know that this is all BS. It's like it's a hoax, basically. This is not the way to become a vampire. It explains that the, rit the ritual here explains that um, in order to turn into a vampire, you need to kill an innocent woman and bury yourself in the earth beneath her blood. And that's you from your experience, especially being in the supernatural guild. Um, that is that's just this is not going to work. This is like the wrong information to give to somebody. <laughs> you might as well be drinking Clamato juice with the goths. Come on, guys. Like, Yeah. Um, okay. I relay that info to my team, being like, these guys are idiot vampire wannabes. So we're Man. dealing with a whole bunch of dummies. <laughs> and a ghost somewhere. So I feel a little bit better knowing that. I don't know if it's just false but I'm feeling a little bit more relieved that these guys are just dummies. Yeah. Um, what, are you, what are you doing, uh, Bear and Azula? Um, I'm just looking around to see anything of interest. I notice there's a hallway or an opening. Here yeah. At so the top. yeah. So the room, the room with the the chairs and the table and the parchment, uh, that room has a, a connecting hallway to the north. It actually splits off into two as well. One to the left, one to the right. Um, do you want to head north, or do you want to double back? Well, uh, can I can I listen to see if I can hear the sound of water coming from anywhere else besides the chamber behind us that we just came from? Sure, give me a perception check. Uh, I'm actually going to give you an advantage on this, Michelle, because your character is a deep gnome, right? Yes. Okay, go for it. Uh, a 12 with advantage. You can only hear the, the sound of the murky water behind you that you waded through. Mm, okay. All right. Then I guess we go somewhere. But guys, I wonder if the ghost is trying to get revenge. Like, what if, what if we had just, like, let her go Right, like after she goes into someone's body and then they try to go somewhere, like what if we just let them go and then like see where they end up? 
Yeah, we almost tried that. We tried that with a little girl. She tripped. And then when she was in Cecil, she was just an angry ghost. <laughs> I don't know if it has something to do with, like, the people, too. Because, hmm. cause, you know, the little girl, she was just trying to get by us. Cecil threw you down hard with a bar stool, man. All right, fine, fine. I don't want any more stools breaking across my back. <laughs> I don't, I don't want that for you either. So I guess, uh, I'm sure you guys think you want to go north, see, continue on with this room. Or I know yeah. there's the other entryways, <laughs> but I mean, I'm just... curious if maybe the circle around or anything we can always check. I guess okay. I'll go into this room here. Okay. Okay. I follow. Can okay, I so maybe do a perception check, Bob, just what, what I see? I'll just describe the room to you first. Oh, you may not perfect. need to do too much. Um, but yeah, so this area is looks like a library of sorts uh, to the north, right? Yeah, yeah. So you head to that northern room beyond the meeting room, and you can see that there is a library. Dusty bookshelves line the walls, and there are bodies in here. There are two bodies, a man and a woman lying on the floor, blood running from their wounds. They are unconscious and located right here. I'll put the tokens on the map. What do you do? Um, you said they're unconscious, but they're okay. I'm going to... Uh, do they look like um, the little girl? I'm going to look at their features. I so. would say that they resemble Nell. Okay. The fa but the father is a male human who looks um yeah, I'd say similar, darker, darker skin, darker features like Nell and is wearing white robes with an ornate green and silver surcoat. The woman looks like Nell in a lot of her structure. Um she is a human who is wearing a uh a blackened chain shirt and a bandolier of wooden stakes around her chest, kind of like, kind of like a sash. Hmm. Well, out here, thinking they're like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, they're unconscious, but are they stable? That's. I'm gonna check to see if they're stable. Medicine check to see if you can. Uh, okay. Yeah. Do I have medicine? Check? <laughs> I don't. But we're gonna see. We're gonna try. Oh, not great. So eight. I mean, you could check their pulse and look yeah. at their vitals, and even without a roll, you could tell that they're alive. Um, they do have wounds all over their bodies, though. Cuts and abrasions, and you can't get a sense of exactly how uh, life-threatening they are, though. Anyone else know anything about things? I got nothing. Okay. Um, I guess we'll leave them here for now and we'll keep we'll come back for them for sure though yeah mm. i would like to uh just grab one of the wooden stakes from from naomi's bandolier sure just just one sure yeah you could do that oh. cool. you'll take uh yeah you'll take the uh stake and you hold it clutch it and you can move on from here anything else you want to do in the room um, oh, I want to check the library, see if there's anything that is not dusty, like things that have been moved recently. Yeah. Um, or anything important. Is there any silver around? Oh, no. Just, oh. Just... That's so, 16. A 16 perception? Um, yes. You don't see anything silver in the room, Azula, at first glance, but Steph, with a 16, you'll notice that there are tons of books here about occultism. Um, Ugh, these guys are nuts. Are you proficient with arcana or religion? Nope, I am not. Okay. Anyone else proficient? Azula, do you know arcana? Uh, You're like a magic person. Yeah, let me see how much I... Yeah, I'm at a plus three. I can take a look. Are you proficient? Yeah, take a look at this. Yeah, I am proficient. Yes. Okay. So if you're proficient, and this goes for you too, Bear, if you're proficient in either arcana or religion, you can recognize these books similarly to the scrolls you found in the other room as uh, folklore and nonsense. Uh, man, even I know that these scrolls are garbage. Mm. This 
none of this is real. Yeah. Great. Some unhinged conspiracy theorist yeah. type folks. All right. Yeah, we got to stop this or until before someone really gets hurt trying to. It may be do hard. This. It may be hard to like you know us in our, our modern world think of people who might be into nonsense and things like this and believe it to be true. So do your best. It's a role playing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Never seen anybody no. think that the earth is flat. Especially or... in this modern day and age where we have so much <laughs> available to us technology and information, <laughs> you know. Uh, okay. Well, Next thing you know, they'll be having only <laughs> lemon water and cayenne pepper water or something. Uh, All right. So okay, that's, so that's I what don't you think find. You, there's still hey, just the, the one entrance and exit to this room, right? So I guess we'll keep going on. Yeah, yeah. this cavern seems to be a one one room. Yeah. Okay. Looks like there's a door here maybe yeah so the when you head out of the the library room to the east there was another corridor that uh opened up to a bit wider of a hallway and then there's a set of double doors uh these double doors do look like they are uh similar to the ones that you saw entering this this uh the cistern it's basically pretty ornate with some iron reinforced uh, materials. Seems like a very hard to break down door. All right. So I guess we can. Let's come keep... back to that one. That one. Yeah. Looked... Um, let's see if there's something. Let's check this way if there's a key, maybe. It narrows the hallway as you go further north and to the east um, to almost a passage that would be tough for Brock to get through. I mean, you could, but it would be squeezing to get through it. Why don't I, does someone want to go in front of me, maybe, to scout it out before I try to squeeze myself through it? I got seems, you, I got seems you. Seems like a bear situation. Oh, yeah, bear, you got this. I got this. And I I, I march forward. Okay. You need me All to move right. you forward, or can you do it? Yeah, there you go. Okay, good. Yeah. All right, what do I see? I'm over here now. What do so, you see? What do you see? It's pretty weird, Michelle. Uh, bear can, you can take a quick turn to the right, and you're starting to head south again. But you hear something, almost like a, a faint, very faint moan. Okay, I'll, I'll come back um, to like the little narrow passageway and I'll, I'll whisper, I'm keeping my voice down. I'll say, it's pretty weird. I hear something, almost like a faint moan. Hmm. Did you end up looking? I saw you move the token. Do you want to see what's there? Oh. Yeah, like when I was over there, I was yeah. kind of like peering if yep. I could see anything. And I have my, my deep gnome dark vision. Oh, you could see it all. You peer over yes. the rock wall, looking where that moaning sound was coming. And before you, you can see a chasm opening up in the floor where the packed earth washed away. An ancient creaking rope bridge crosses this abyss. Hanging from cages are five skeletons near the 20 foot high ceiling. Moss and mold riddle their bones. Gold bracers glint on the arms of one of the skeletons suspended over the chasm. Wow. Okay, so I come back and I tell them, <laughs> I heard a faint moan, I saw the chasm, the rope bridge, bodies hanging, gold bracelet, Something very strange is going on. Definitely some occult things. Uh, I, I don't feel safe going this way alone. Do you think you can squeeze through, guys? Bork, it, maybe I can try and pull you through this crack? I think, no, I think, yeah, we can We can do it. Um, we'll follow you. I'll follow you. All I right. just put up the artwork of the, the skeletons in the cages. Wow. Bad things have happened here. All right, tell me where you want to go. Okay, uh, I'll go to the rope bridge, but they're hanging above us. These skeletons are hanging like above us. Are we able to reach them? The ceiling is 20 feet. So oh. I'd imagine these cages are roughly the size of a, a person. So maybe they, they really just encompass the five foot square above that. So they're probably 15 feet above you. Okay. Um, I'm taking a look at this bridge here. Seems to be the only way forward, correct? Yeah. 
Um, I'm gonna kind of take a light step, but I'm gonna cast like mending as I like slowly move along, maybe mending any broken cracks in the floorboards and any rope that seems to be kind of fraying. Sure. Um, we'll just put uh, the circle here around the cage and the over the chasm. This is the one that the bracers are glinting off of the skeleton. Um, and those look like cool bracers, guys. <laughs> you think we can reach them? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <clears throat> uh, Christian, you want to mend the pieces of, of of wood as you go across? Yeah. Okay. Give me um. a... Give me a dexterity saving throw. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, 21. <laughs> 21. You go to mend, like, the first broken one, and immediately that that step of on the solid wood, you break right through it. And Ugh. you fall down to the ground. Or you know, you fall, you're going to fall down to the ground, but you catch yourself on, like, the post before you take a full... You know, pull your full body weight forward, and uh, you do not fall down. You, you go backwards. Oh man, how crazy would that have been? You're dead. <laughs> I'm just okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> um. So there is no repairing the bridge then, as I can tell. You, you, it would to do so on every single piece of wood would be so tedious it wouldn't be worth it. It Got would it. take. It could take you like an hour or more to fully mend each piece and. To be honest with you, some of them are not missing pieces, right? They're just structurally unsound. Just... Yeah. Hmm. The rope, though, right? The post and the rope that was tied yeah. to it, they they held you. We could throw some rope around. Or you can just use the rope instead of trying to walk across. Yeah, we can use the rope to kind of... Yeah, can I... Bear, you have the best vision. Do you think that this loops back to where we started? Remember we went north to the, to yeah. the table room? Mm. Right, I think it might. Like from what I can see across the bridge, it looks like it might kind of start heading back towards the west. Oh, yeah, okay. You want to give me an insight see. check, Bear, for your um, gnomely, deep gnomely structure? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you're a deep gnome. Do you have like echo location or something? <laughs> like a bat? <laughs> Is that you, racist? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it is speciest. According oh, speciest. To you, I'm so. sorry. Speciest. Uh, Bear, you don't, you don't, uh, huh. you don't know exactly, but your intuition is probably good. That probably does uh, bring you back west. Mm -hmm. So you don't know okay. for sure, but that's what your guess would be. Can I take my my fifty foot hempen rope and like make it into a lasso? And I want to try and like hook the rope onto mm -hmm. this cage that has the gold bracers. Sure. Give me a, like a ranged attack. A, a, a ranged? Yeah, just give me a dexterity check. See if oh. you can, or, or strength, actually, you are throwing it. So strength or dexterity, just like an attack roll, basically. Okay, uh, I'll just do a strength. Uh, 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 12. That's fine. You were able to lasso to the other side and hit one of the posts that seemed to be sturdy. Oh, okay, wait, I'm sorry. A post? Like, I, I was throwing it at this key. Oh, at the, oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about the other side of the chasm. Okay, sorry, you're doing it on the on the actual uh, the cage. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Do you have, like, a grappling hook of sorts? Um, I, I, I was checking my inventory for that. I'm not sure. If you bought, like, an it's either an adventurer's pack or an explorer's pack, one of them... I think has a grappling hook as standard part of it. All right, sweet. Then then I have a grappling hook. Okay. So so in that case, yeah. yeah. If I roll my my grappling. 12 with a grappling hook on my rope, yeah, can you I, could hit I, a cage. Yeah. Mhm. Mm All right. Cool. Well then, I'll give it a tug to see if it's secure. It Is feels it rather secure. secure, yeah. All right. Guys, I'm going I'm going to go check out this cage. Okay, I hold the other end, ready, like, so, I don't know. You climbing up the rope, is that it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to get over to that cage. So I'll climb up, and I'm going to, like, I am now, like, on this cage, and I'm checking it out. Okay. Look, 
Yeah, looking for any And I'm holding markings. on to dear life because I'm still frightened and now I'm scared of losing Bear. Hello. Bear, you're 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 crawling, you know, slowly inching your way closer to the cage. Yes. You um <clears throat> get about halfway when the skeletal creature inside starts to move kind of very unnaturally, right? Kind of like cracking its bones, moving its neck, and its head swivels around. Loosely, its hands grab the cage, it stands up, and it looks at you and just starts to squawk at you. Yeah, yeah! And all the other skeletons start to wake and do the same thing, and they start to moan and, and screech, and a ghostly wind starts to move through this chamber. Everyone needs to give me a sanity check. Come back, See if you bear, lose a come back, point. come back. Oh, I messed up. I messed up. And I, I go I'm back. Sorry. <laughs> Everybody needs to give me a, a madness check right now, though. Okay. What What do we roll? The DC is 13 for this one. It's a That's wisdom a, saving throw, yeah. It's a what? Wisdom? Three. Wisdom. Wisdom? Okay. I'm sorry, guys. I messed up. Oh. No, it was shiny. We would all do it. We all did it. <laughs> they were so shiny. Thanks for understanding. All right, we all failed. You all failed. You all take another point of uh, sanity, and those who failed need to give me a constitution saving throw. Oh, my God. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, Bear, you critted. Oh, I hope you're on that rope. I feel so bad. <laughs> all right. Well, what do we got, Bob? Uh, the number was for that roll was 16. Who failed and who passed? <laughs> Everyone except Steph. <laughs> okay, so you all uh, lost this point of sanity. Yeah, you all lost a point of madness, but those of you pass, which was Steph, you don't take this damage. But Azula and Bear, you take nine necrotic damage. Oof. Necrotic. You were also deafened. Oh. Yep, you can't hear anything other than the screeching sounds of these skeletons wailing in the night. What? Exactly. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Is let's go back. Yeah. Let's go back. I'm like yelling. <laughs> okay. Is this deafened effect kind of from here on out? Or I guess you'll let us know if it fades. Yeah, I'll let you know when it fades. Okay. Uh, so you climb back down. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm still as even, fast as I can. Even if you can't hear me, I'm like using one hand. I'm holding on for dear life on one hand and motioning back. There, yeah, the other one. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. After a, a few rounds, you just stand on the edge of the the chasm and the, the skeletons kind of uh, go go limp and fall back into their dormant state. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear, but I'm gonna, like, let's go this way. Let's go back. Do you want to go back? Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. <laughs> All right. Let's, yeah, that way. This is great. <laughs> yeah, you're deaf. And so you follow the leader here, Azula, back across into the, uh, to the main rooms here. All right. What do you do as you get back into that uh, kind of that meeting room, the room with the double doors, the library, that intersection? Um, the other door is, can they, can you guys, can they hear yet? Or are they still deaf? They are still deafened. Skeletons? Yeah, they're deafened. Cool. Okay. So I take out a sheet of paper or no, in the dust on the ground and a stick, I'm like drawing the lines of where we can go. You do have parchment right here and there looks like there's, well, dried up ink, but you could, you probably have some ink in your pack. Okay. So I go over to the table I motion them over to the table and I draw out what we've seen and ask, who, or go, which which way are we going? Doing the doors? Or are we going down and to the, the west? Because that's the only place we haven't gone yet. I'm going to, like, knock on the door um, to kind of, sh like, show that it, we can't open it. Like, and, like, shrug. What's your passive oh. perception, Azula? Uh, my passive perception is 13. Okay. Uh, gotcha. So do me a favor, everybody. Put yourselves back by the meeting room table for a second. 
Uh, as you're drawing out and showing Bear which way we should go, Brock, uh, obviously, Azula, you went to the door to knock, right? Yeah. You're deafened, so it's very hard for you to hear. <clears throat> but move your token right here. Bye, so you, guys. You go to knock <laughs> on the door, and as you go to knock, a hand reaches out and grabs your wrist, preventing you from knocking. You turn around, ready to fight your assailant. It is the woman, Naomi. Oh. She looks badly uh, wounded. She's bleeding all over and various cuts and things like that. Uh, but she holds her side and her ribs and she grabs your hand and she goes, puts her finger up to her lips, telling you to be quiet. <laughs> what? You can't hear her. I, yeah. Yeah. Did I hear her at all? Can I roll her? Or no, I'm, I look back because Azul is not here. I don't know yeah. if I can see him or not. You you can see him. He's within the range of the lantern that he's car or she's carrying. And you look back and you can see that there's the woman, Naomi, who you presume was Naomi, the bandolier mm -hmm. of, of uh, st stakes, is grab like it looks like almost they're grappling. Um, okay. I'm going to I guess she's grappling. so it looks like she's fighting him? Yeah, to you, to your knowledge, you don't you don't know. Okay, I'm gonna run over there. And say, what are you doing? And uh, oh, you just yeah, kind of Zula can't hear me. Yeah, so you... I'm because I forgot. <laughs> That's okay, but but Naomi can, and she'll come <laughs> to you and she'll let go of of Zula's hand. She'll like throw her hand down and take out a stake and get ready to to uh, to attack. But then she realizes that two of you are coming and it's you're not uh, an enemy. It's of, or at least she doesn't know you at least. And she's going to put down her, her stake kind of to her side. And she'll say, who are you? Not a vampire. I can tell. Not real. I can tell. We are trying to find a ghost that possessed what I assume was your daughter. And now she's upstairs being babysat by half orc with a javelin wound. It's been a long night, man. Uh, it's been a long so. night for me, too. You said Nell is okay. Yes, we left her in the care of a very spry, large half orc. Ah, Cecil, the proprietor. Damage. Yes. Oh, good. And she like leans her back up against the, the cave wall, and she'll just kind of use that to rest upon. She has some clear wounds, like I described. Uh, she's injured, and uh, she says, "If only a wooden stake worked on a blasted ghost, I wouldn't be here right now." Well, we, we can do some damage. We've done some damage to the ghost. She says, trust me. Uh, she's, I'm an expert. I hunt supernatural things. I know what I'm doing. Oh. Ah, we're, <laughs> we're experts, too. Oh, really? She says. Yeah. What experience do you have, then? Oh, boy. <laughs> Where do you want to start? All the way back in episode one. We, a uh, previous lifetime ago, uh, <laughs> no, um, no, we're, we're here to stop a ghost, to clean this up, we're here to help. So what, I mean, clearly these people are crazy, uh, because none of this is real. N none of what they're trying to do is going to make them into vampires. Yeah, I gathered that. We looked at their parchment, it's a whole bunch of nonsense. Big hoax. So what's through this door that you don't want us knocking? I'm fairly certain that this is where it all started, in this room. She can, oh, like her side, grasping at her side, she's injured. Oh. She says, my husband and I, Victor, he's unconscious. I had to knock him out. He was possessed by that ghost. Uh, okay. Um, I, oh, I have to try to relay this to you guys, because you're just deaf hearing us talk. Yeah, they can't uh, hear you. This is yeah. All you you probably hear like the like Charlie Brown, you know, like blah 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 blah. <laughs> that there was a ghost and blah, blah blah blah. And so yeah, Steph, you you can hear this and you'll eventually relay it. I would say yeah. Michelle and Christian, your characters will probably gain their um, hearing back by the end of this conversation. So you can just take in all this information as well. Okay. So, so they're rubbing everyone... my ears. Yeah. So did the ghost go through this door? Is that is that what we're thinking? I don't know where it, where it went after I, again, as I said, knocked Victor unconscious, but it went somewhere else in this place. 
Okay. It could be here. It could have been, like as you said, it, it went upstairs to attack Nell. Hmm. I, I don't know, but Nell, she kind of looks down towards the ground and she says, I always knew there was something special about her. Absent-mindedly, she flips one of the stakes between her fingers and she looks up at you, kind of taken aback, real realizing that she's not alone, talking out loud. And she says, I'm sorry, I had a long night as well. Uh, my husband and I, we are vampire hunters. We heard that this Black Rose Inn was opening up again. There was a story about 50 years ago, a cult wanted to turn into vampires. And they set up their lair here beneath the inn. Now, a lot of this huh. is just rumor and superstition, but where there is rumor and superstition, there tends to be the supernatural. You wouldn't know anything about this, but... We, um... I'm sure you've never even a encountered a vampire before. <laughs> uh, you'd be surprised what we've seen. Um, so, I guess now we have to figure out which way to go. Um, do we want it? Let's... Well, now that you have us as reinforcements, we can go through it together and finish this once and for all. Yeah, be brave. Well, if you are experts like you say you are, then perhaps we have a chance. You'll know what... She does, like, the Socratic method here. She's like, what will stop a ghost who has a vengeful spirit? <laughs> you... Right the wrongs. Exactly. And how do we right this wrong of a mother who never, uh, who was taken from her child, or had her child taken from her, was killed? Oh. Uh, I, I, I'm not very good with children. How do we right this wrong? How do we put this spirit to rest? We can give her oh, a new daughter? I'd say you, you could get your hearing back now. At the end of the explanation, you're, you're back. So you, you kind of reiterate everything and probably a little foggy, but you can hear. So what do we do? How do we put this spirit to, west, to rest? We show that her daughter is okay. How do we do that? Who has a daughter other than I? Probably Dobby, but he's not here. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to bring Nell down here. Well, I mean, that's... What about... Uh, again, I'm not good with children. I don't know, man. Um, do we know any more about this, this spirit? Like, mm, who she was? It's there. It was 50 years ago. Her daughter could be dead, too, at this point. From what I've done in my research, I read that the woman who was staying here at the inn with her daughter was abducted. Her daughter was left alone, but the crazy occultists, they needed a sacrifice. So they killed her and her daughter was orphaned. I believe <clears throat> the daughter may even be still alive, but who knows where she is located right now. And you know your parents? I know my parents, yes. Oh, darn. Hmm. Like I said, if I bring Nell down here to be some sort of symbolic representation, I'm not going to hesitate to save her and get her out of here if it means any of your lives. No, oh, that sounds like the only thing we could do, though. Guys, what do you think? As far yeah. as I'm aware, we don't have any access to, like, a bunch of 60-year-old women who might have been orphans back in the day. <laughs> uh, it really does. Got a wig. Was it a half work? Uh, <laughs> I guess I'm pretty small. Like, uh, if you want to throw a wig on me, I... you know what? <laughs> Never mind. Mm, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, if we can, we can try to we can guarantee your daughter's safety as best as we can. There's three of us here and we've lived through everything so far. Trust us. Give me us. a persuasion check. Oh boy. 
This could be, uh, anybody could do this if you want somebody else to do it, but um, the group is kind of making this check, so I'm okay with somebody else doing it. If you don't feel anybody like your character is the best explainer. Uh, let me see. My charisma modifier is minus one. Oh, I have plus seven on, per on persuasion, so oh I'll give it a God. shot. So what do you say then to add to this, Azula? Yeah. To, to um, guarantee this woman uh, some sort of assurance. I'm going to kind of tell her that her daughter, you're, she was attacked upstairs, and this creature will continue to do that if we don't stop her. Mm. So right. if we don't do this, then your daughter will be haunted forever. Go ahead, make that persuasion check. Uh, Call out your number. A 13? She'll say, deal. But like I said, the moment that she's in danger, we're out of here. All right. I'll let those vampires continue to walk the nights, but we'll be long gone. Okay. All right. Should we walk back and come on down? Yeah. You'll you can head back and you know we don't we're not even on the roll twenty map right now for the viewers, but um, you can. You can go back. You'll see that there's another. There was only one other area you didn't explore. If you go down, it's to the west. Um, and she'll tell you, don't go that way. They did. And it's a bunch of traps. They have treasured offerings and coffers. And uh, just just the first one uh, hurt her husband pretty badly. Okay. Okay. So Good thing we didn't go that way. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you'll head back uh, to the storeroom. You'll yell up to Cecil. And Cecil will, will actually, he'll come down with you. So he'll he'll come down and bring Nell, and he's got his sword and his spear and his shield on his back, and he'll say, well, this is, uh, the Black Rose is my inn. I'm not going to let anybody take it from me now, whether they are Don't dead or... Don't look in the water. Don't look in the water. Water, Don't you said? Water? Don't look in the water. Oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear. I'm known to look into water. Don't do it, man. I just might have to. Don't don't do it. Don't do it. Every just every look. time I fought in the gladiator pits, I'd look into this little trough and uh, <laughs> speak to myself and say, Cecil, if there's anybody that can win this fight, it's you. Well, you can you can say it to me, and I'll say it back to you, Cecil. If there's anyone who can't look in the water, it's it's you. Uh -huh. I I start doing like an interpretive <laughs> dance. I do like handstands <laughs> and cartwheels. See you all over here. That's good. And the same for Nell. Like, Nell, just don't look in the water. Don't do it. Yeah. Oh, we found your parents, too. <laughs> <laughs> Side note. Yeah, so once you bring uh, Cecil and Nell down, Nell will reunite with her mother, give her a big hug, and uh, she'll say something to the effect of, like, Mom, he, I'm so glad you're okay. Where's Daddy? And she's like, he's all right. He's sleeping. He's fine. And she'll say, I'm sorry I told you about the ghost. I'm sorry I saw that vision. And she's like, now, now, it's okay. It's all right. No need to, no need to be upset. We're all going to be, we're going to make this better. We're going to make this better. Do you say anything as this conversation unfolds? I'm not good with children. I just, like, pat her on the head. Okay. Fair enough. So you, uh, you kind of let it, let it go. Uh, but they have this moment, they reunite, and they start to head towards those double doors in the cistern. Uh, place your tokens by the double doors. I'm going to put the character tokens here. I put uh, So I got Cecil, who's there. You've got Naomi, who's right next to Brock. Um, the husband is still sleeping. Victor is still sleeping over by the, uh, the table in the library. Okay. Okay. I guess she'll she'll maybe bring his body though to to the main room in case they needed to make a quick escape. She could drag his body. She'll drag his body to the storeroom actually with your help. Yeah, I'll, I'll help her with that. Lift him yeah. and have like I don't know some ropes or something around him so he's easy yeah. to grab. And, and yeah, actually, we'll just bring him back up to the storeroom if you if you're taking that time. So. Oh uh, yeah, we can take him out completely. Yeah, exactly. So we'll do that, and then you head down below into the into the uh, the cistern. All right, I'm going to switch us over to the roll 20 view. Okay. 
my runes already. I haven't used anything fancy yet. No, you guys were like, okay, yeah, I don't need to rage. I don't need to use any of my abilities. I don't need to do any of this. Just fox cantrips and... I think you're well, actually pretty loaded, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, we haven't used anything really. We're ready. I okay. was not expecting Cecil to just bash Bear with 24 points of damage with, with the a stool. far stool. Right? stool. I have everything but HP. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we actually, go. Actually, uh, yeah, no, I'll I'll hold on to. I'll be like one last check to heal ya. Yeah. Anybody but... need healing? Are we taking any rests or no? I only have. Uh... I don't know if we have time for rest. True, this true, true, true. Is like already yeah. best three people. All right. So then you run back down to the cistern. You go to that double doors. Uh, they are unlocked. You can inspect them and you see they're unlocked. There's no locking mechanism on it, at least. You open the doors and inside you can see packed dirt, a packed dirt cave. An obsidian altar rests in an alcove. An ancient skeleton in a moth-eaten dress lies on its surface. Five polished mahogany coffins fill the alcove opposite the altar. Each has a name inscribed on it. You can't see from your vantage point, but if you were to go closer, you can read the names. They're in common. You also see brown flaking stains running from the gutters of the altar into the packed dirt floor. Um, Make this a, a viewable on roll twenty. What do you do? Okay. Um, Move yourselves in. Um. I think here. I am actually going to activate my frost ruin. So for ten minutes, I get plus two on all ability checks and saving thrones for strength and con. So, I'm just going to activate that now because this looks like. Yeah. Good idea. I need that. I'm, um, I'm going to cast um, Mage Armor on myself. Good idea. Probably should have cast that at the beginning of the adventure. Probably. <laughs> but go on. Good, good, good. And Bear, are you doing anything preemptively? Uh, well, I will grab my axe. Um, I'm going to come over and read the names that are on the mahogany coffin. Sure. I love the word mahogany. So I'll say it again. The mahogany <laughs> coffins have inscriptions on them. They are names written on it. Irvinson, Moldavia, Bartov, Argovian, and Tulis. Interesting. Once you all enter this room, and I'll move in Naomi and Cecil and obviously, I don't have a token for Nell, but she would, let's just say, assume that she's next to her mother at all times, maybe even within the square. So we'll use that as the token for both. As soon as you all enter into the room and Bear goes to check out the coffins, the rest of you look around, cast spells. You can see the ghostly spirit, the woman with the dark hair and green glowing eyes, emanating from the altar, kind of just coming up from it and then floating in the air. She doesn't attack. She doesn't move closer. But she stands there looking at all of you. What do you do? You're talking uh, like back here? Yep, over that altar, that bloody altar. Um, oh, I'm going to be like, uh, I'm going to look over at Naomi and be like, do you, do you want to try this? And be like, look, we have a child here <laughs> who may resemble you if you weren't wet. Sure. Um, see, she's fine. <laughs> The I, ghost the ghost will use her long, sickly fingers to point at the girl, at Nell. I don't, I don't know what that means, guys. I believe she wants to say her goodbyes, as Naomi kind of just mutters out loud. Oh, okay. Nell, say it's all right. goodbye. It's all right, Nell. It's all right. Stay next to me, and she'll approach the altar. I am going to approach with them as like a shield directly next to them. Okay. So or, you get. Uh, I don't know if I could be in front of them. I'm not sure. But mm, okay, if you want to get in front, that's fine. You could be like right here. Yeah, as long as she can see. Like Nell can peer around, maybe, or you know, I'm yeah. trying to not be a hindrance, but be there. Yeah, that's fine. Cecil is looking around in astonishment. He's like, 
I can't believe all this was underneath my inn. Unreal. It's the last time I buy property from a lease lender. <laughs> Poppycock. All right, so you approach with Nell and Naomi, the ghost kind of beckoning forward, beckoning you forward. And when you get to the blood stream, the earth beneath you starts to move and shift. You can see creatures' hands reaching up from underneath the packed dirt, pulling themselves upwards towards you. These creatures no. reveal their faces and you can see what they look like. They're un these undead creatures, what they look like. Here you go. I don't like this. Oh my. Yeah, so these creatures start to pull themselves up. This obviously startles you all. Everyone give me a sanity check. This is gonna be wisdom as well. The DC for this one is 16. You said wisdom? Yep. Oh my god. Oof. Oof. Another nope. sanity lost for all of you. So I think Bear, uh, sorry, Brock, you've lost four? I've lost four. Okay, so, so you are on the verge here of some some real madness. Yeah, do, I I would instinctively try to smash it with my foot. I don't know if that does anything, but I'm going to try and stomp on it because I don't know what else to do. We're, we're going to go into combat, and these things are, like, okay. half in the ground still. So, like, yeah, you'll definitely have the opportunity to, to, like, yeah, smash it while it's not able to move too well. Yeah. Let's okay. go into initiative order here. Okay. I'll place these. I'm gonna put the music on because we need different music than this. Than this. Whoa. All right. Okay. What do we get? I see Steph in eleven. I'm eleven. I got a nineteen. There? I got a sixteen. All right, so I got Azula at 19, Bear at 16, Brock at 11. I'm going to roll for Cecil and for Naomi. Cecil gets a total of 12. And Naomi gets a huge roll. Naomi gets... Naomi got a 17. And our friends here... They're going to go in the order two. I'm just putting everybody in. Cecil. This is Naomi right here. Naomi's going to be with in the same square as her mom. Sorry, uh, Nell is going to be with Naomi, and Naomi's there, yes. Okay. Okay. I think I've got everybody here. Naomi's not going to go first. Azula, you will go first, but she's going after you. Great. I'm going to cast um, Erupt Earth. What? Um, I'll put that right up there. So it's going to make a cube. I'm guessing I can just have the cube start on that line where they are. Sure. First. What's the size? And 20 foot? 20 foot cube. Yep. I'll place it for you. Kind of like so this? Uh, Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. And what does it do? Um, so that, let's see. Each creature in the area must make a dexterity savings throw. A creature takes 3d12 bludgeoning damage on a failed throw or half on a successful one. And it becomes difficult terrain. Okay, roll your damage and I'll take the saving throws. Um, did I do that third level? Yes. They're all gonna fail. Sweet, so 15. Man, that stinks. <laughs> I had a three and a four for one of those, for those twelves. But think about it though: four creatures times fifteen. You just did effectively sixty damage. That's true. Ooh, that's yeah, true. Awesome. Good job. So these creatures, while they're in the earth, are basically hit by this tremor and 
Uh, they take 15 damage each. It's bludgeoning, you said? Yes. Okay. All right. Seems to go through. Uh, we give any movement or bonus actions? Um. No, that's it for me right here. Okay. And I'm Nail... going to take a couple steps back. Gotcha. And um, the ghost of... Uh, that you've seen before, the ghost that's been possessing people is still hovering. When the creatures do come up from the ground, you can see the expression on the ghost's face is rather sad and sullen, uh, almost angry that these creatures are here now in its presence. So it doesn't doesn't seem thrilled to, to be here. Um, we go to Naomi's next. She's going to go, and she's going to look at Brock and um, basically say, <laughs> well... It's going to step back here. Uh, she's not thrilled to to go near these creatures. So she's going to step back with Nell, and she'll go back to next to Azula. What yeah, do you... I uh, don't blame you. Your turn. You guys are terrifying. I believe it. No, it's Bear's turn. Excuse me, Bear. Bear's turn. Yeah, okay. So at this point, like, I read the situation, and I go, Ah! Oh! This day, man, this day, man. I got a stool to the back. I got a stool to the face. Like we had to deal with these like conspiracy nonsense theories. And now freaking zombies, are you serious? And I just, I fly into a rage and um, I, I, I scream and I charge. But of course, because I'm but a very small gnome in my head, it sounds very intimidating and scary. But to you, what you hear is, Ah. As I, <laughs> I love it. As I charge it. with my axe raised, um, and I will come stand alongside. Is is that's me? Yes, that's I will stand stand alongside my my loyal battle companion Bork, and I will swing with my axe. Um, while rage. Oh my god! What you got? Um, hmm. Okay, Ooh, that so, one. well, I rolled a one. Yeah, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I guess I get two attacks, though, right? Yes, this you do. True. You get a second you attack. Yeah, yeah. Oh, bless. Okay, here we go. I just got two excited. And I rolled a two. <laughs> a just nine... get it on the way early. It's okay. <laughs> nine doesn't hack it, so... Oh, uh, okay. Well, is, um... Is that it? I guess that's all I can do, huh? You moved your bonus action to rage and you attacked. Yeah, that's it. But you're there and you're raging. Okay. The impotent rage is still coursing through my veins. That's right. <laughs> all right. These creatures okay, are going to go next, Michelle. So look out. Here we go. The okay. creatures are spending half of their movement to get out of the ground. So they don't have much movement left. Um, but they're going to get up and stand and then start to encircle. This area is clear now, correct, Christian? That was like a one-time thing. It blasted, and that was it. Um, I think yeah. No, I think it's difficult terrain until it's cleared. Oh, is it a concentration? Oh, it's not. No, it's not. It just says. Uh, it just becomes. Uh, it just becomes a difficult ground. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so then actually that's kind of cool. We'll we'll put we'll keep we'll keep it we'll put it back here. If I could possibly move it again, there we go. Um, so it's going to take even more. So really, they can only take a five-foot step is all they'd have the ability to do. Um, the ones that came up out of the ground. This one actually could could go through normally, so it'll move. One, two, three, because this one will step forward, and that's about it. All right, so we got some of these undead ghouls looking to attack the front row. We're going to do two on Brock and three on Bear. I think that's the way we're going to do it. We'll do the first two oh. up top on you, Brock. Okay. Uh, oh, there you go. Uh, they go to make claw attacks. Each of them makes two attacks. We'll do the first one, and I'll roll them all separately here. So the first one's going to get a 11 is the highest it gets to hit, so that's not going to hit you. Nope. The second one, the one that just removed itself from the ground, that mm -hmm. one is going from the difficult ground. That one is going to get a 17. Nope. And then a nat 20. Ugh. Okay. So that will. That hit. one does hit. <laughs> Ooh, you know what? Actually, I have to. I apologize. I have to roll. They seem to have advantages. They work with pack-like tactics. I have to roll with advantage here. So let me roll 
the first rolls with advantage. Uh, so I think I might turn the first creatures miss one of them into a hit with an 18. Does that hit you? 18 is my armor class, so that one does hit. Okay, so a normal hit, not a critical. And then the other one, let me just roll one more dice to see if I can turn the other miss into a hit. Uh, another nat 20. Um, oh, okay. That's alarming. Yeah. Okay, let's see how it works. <laughs> uh, let's see for damage. Oh, you got this. Ooh, maybe you don't. Uh, 12 plus... Three, so 15 from one crit. Okay. Oops, I just rolled the wrong number of dice, so I'm going to cancel that one. The wrong type and the wrong number. This is the correct roll, and it's going to be 16. So I did 15 and 16. So I'm going to activate my Cloud Rune, yeah. um, which will... I'm going to move that 16 over to its friend. Ah, okay. So... Perfect. Let's um, do that. Do you need me to read that? I'm sorry. No, uh, I remember this. I love. I love this one. This is actually a really cool one. No, I remember this. You basically just give somebody else a damage roll. The damage roll. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So the one do. You, so the one that crit was the one that came out of the ground. That's the one you want to use. Um, I it can't go back to him. It has to go to another one. Yeah, so I know. But his attack is the one you want to deflect, right? Yes, that's okay. the one I want to deflect, and I'm going to put it actually towards the one um, directly to the right of me that's uh, in between Bear and myself. Or that's um, directly to the... Yes, east. to the right of you, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the one that's still in difficult ground takes more damage now and uh, is bloodied. This one is bloodied. You Great. can tell. Okay. Uh, the one to the north that hit you twice, he's done. And the one that hit you once without a critical hit is going to get a total of nine. Okay, nine so slashing damage as it claws into you. 24 total. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, 24 total. Exactly. Um, okay, so then that, that saves you, actually. The fact that you take that hit and move it to somebody else actually kind of throws that, that creature off. It, like, it looked like it might have been going in to bite you as well for like a third attack. But then mm -hmm. the damage was shifted, and it, it kind of caused it to pause. So we go to oh, the ones below attacking Bear. Bear. I'm rolling these with advantage because they have pack tactics. So okay. it's going to be a total of... The highest result in this first attack is going to be a 13. No, 12. That... Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay, that does not hit. The second attack from the one that is bloodied is a critical hit. Um, oh, man. Let me res <laughs> resolve their damage first. You're going to take half of this because you're raging 18, so it reduces to 9. Okay. How uh, much HP do you have? Yeah, I have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, slashing. Yep, thing. so instead of it being 18, you're going to okay. take only a lowly 9. Gotcha. Okay. And then third one? Uh, that's actually going to get two attacks. So that was the first first uh, undead creature, the one that's bloodied. We're going on to the next one now. Oh. The highest I got is oh, a no. 16. <laughs> I thought that was the second creature. Oh, okay, okay. A 16 is highest. Is your AC uh, 17 now with your shield? Uh, it's 18. Oh, 18. You're good then. Okay, so 16 is the highest I get from the second attack. Uh, excuse me, this creature, the second creature attacking you, its first attack, it's a sev 16. Yeah, that's the second attack. Hit. Gets a total of 14, so that's going to miss as well. Ah, oh, bless. The final creature to the south, it's two attacks. We've got the highest is a 15. And the second attack's highest is a 11. Oh, man. Yeah. Woo. I, rolled, I rolled like a boss against Stephanie and then against Michelle. Relatively normal. Wow. Oh, thank you, Dice Gods. Yeah. All right. Well, that's the uh, creatures' turns. They they swarm your front line. And we go to bear. You're next. On deck would be Brock. No, bear was before. Oh, sorry. Insane. You're 100 percent right. Brock. I mean, not that I don't want Cecil. bear to go a second time. Um, on deck is Cecil. <laughs> okay. I am going to. I have giant's might, so I'm going to do that, um, which gives me. I become large. And I have advantage on strength checks and saving throws. That's in conjunction with my frost ruin. 
but also I get an extra 1d6 damage on a target to hit. So, um, since this guy is bloodied, I'm going to try to hit him first with my, my sword. There we go. I don't think I have advantage. Don't, I don't have advantage on these? Uh, give me one moment here, sorry. Hey, Bob, as this is happening, I just realized I do have dark vision because I'm a shadow sorcerer. Oh, yeah. Um, so I just I was like reading through. <laughs> it's right been a while now. since we played, so yeah, I understand. Yeah, so. Naomi still needs it, though, so that's it'll help her. Okay. Could I get right. the... I'm sorry. What were we saying, Christian? Can you get what? Could I get the full vision then? Or Although I don't... I think, think you can see everything matters. in this room, can you not? No, I have like the dim the light radius i don't have oh. the full although the room is pretty small anyway so i don't know if it... yeah okay so the first one doesn't hit but the second one's gonna hit it's an 18 so it's 24 total for the one that's already bloodied um and i get to roll that plus an extra d6 so that it oh come on man <laughs> six plus four so 10 total to the one that's bloodied all right, that yeah. will hack that one in, in half, killing it. Woohoo! Okay, that's that's my turn. That's my two actions plus bonus. So. Okay, we uh, go to top of the order. No, Cecil goes, then top of the order. Cecil's going to spring into action. He's got his sword and shield out, and he's going to attack with his attacks. He's got a, a slew of them. We're going to get one, two, two hits. Oh, nice. And Cecil's going to do a total of... And we're so mad if it's three damage and Bear no. took like 24 from a bar stool. No, Cecil, <laughs> Cecil's doing some serious damage here. <laughs> okay. We're looking at 13 and 16, 29. Nice. <gasps> nice. Wow. Sorry about that javelin, bro. <laughs> It's quite all right. I could be of some service still. We go to top of the order here, Azula. Um, is there... Okay, can you tell me who's taking damage besides this one right here? So everyone is taking damage except for this one. Got it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fireball... Firebolt, sorry. The bloodied one that Cecil had been... I've been going at. Go for it. That is a 16. That'll hit. For seven damage. Oh, man. Seven. Brutal. That'll kill it. Oh, sweet. Woohoo! Heck yeah. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to kind of shimmy around to get more distance. And that's my turn. All right, so that's the end of your turn. We go to Nell, and then Bear. Nell. Nell sees that the area is opening up. She's going to move with her daughter. Sorry, I said I said Nell, didn't I? Uh, Naomi. Naomi, excuse me. But Nell and Naomi. They're going to run and move one, two, three. They're going to dash to get all the way to the ghost here and try to skirt the outside. Although I guess this would be difficult terrain. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. They can still make it with the double move. So they'll get to the altar and look up. And Nell will kind of look up at the, the ghost and the ghost will look down with its green eyes and uh, reach towards Nell's hand. And Nell will lift up her hand again, holding, clutching the doll in the other and as this moment is happening, we continue the fight. Bear, you're up. That is one brave little girl. Holy shit. Well, her, <laughs> mother's, her mother is forcing her to do this, but still. Yes. <laughs> her, oh God, her mother has, terrible. like, wounds and, like, her, her, her like, sash yeah. of... <laughs> She's got one stake feet. in her hand. She's ready. Dobby would have liked this one. <laughs> yeah. He loves children. He would have been like, he'd been like, give up the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Just Sacrifice toss her in. Her. <laughs> Just toss her in. We'll get Let's out of here. Get it out. All right, so your turn, uh, Bear. 
Uh, yes. Uh, okay, so I'm raging and attacking this guy. Um, wow. So thankful that my friends killed the other two that were attacking me. I probably wouldn't have made it uh, past another turn. Okay, so here we go. Um, a 19 to hit. But that'll okay. connect, for sure. Sweet! And we do 13 damage to this guy. Um, and then I will uh, do my second attack. Uh, da -da 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 -da. 11? Is that okay? That will actually hit. Wow! Mm, nice! As you sense, that might be the number. Oh, okay. Alright. And we do 8, so a total of 21 damage. This one is clearly bloodied. Okay. Anything else from you, Bear? Mm -hmm. Your rage continues? Uh, my rage continues. And if I were to step away, would that trigger an opportunity attack? Yes, it would. Mm. If you were to go backwards like that way? Yeah. Yeah, it would trigger an attack of opportunity. Okay, I'll just stay put. Okay. All right, so we go to the creatures now. Um, now there's a big target here, so we're going to do two on you, Brock. Okay. First one. Oh, I may go down. Highest I always forget number... that I'm, like, squishier than I want. Yeah, you're a little squishier at this point, uh, <laughs> with taking, after taking all the other hits, the crits. Um, 20 is the first attack. Yeah, that one hits. Okay, you are going to take... Uh, let's see here. Nine piercing or slashing damage from a claw. Nine, okay. Second attack from the creature, the same creature, the one on the left. That's going to be a 20 again, non natural. <sighs> and you take, ooh, pretty good damage here. 14. Okay. Still up? Yeah, I'm still up. So now that it put two claws into you, it's coming in for a third attack that it didn't get last time. And uh, here's its okay. bite attack. <laughs> And that's a 23. It's gonna Okay. Hit. You can stop now. It will. <laughs> it. You notice, though, the creature, although it is clearly like an undead, ghoulish, zombie type, um, it looks like it wants to bite you like a vampire. It's trying to, like, grab at your neck area. You're just way too tall at this point. But it's trying to, like, bite at you and try to sink its, you know, it doesn't even have the the canines that it needs, but it's trying to bite you like a vampire would. Okay. <laughs> and the bite is still going to do 13 damage. Oh, that's not good. Okay. And that's the end of that one's turn. That was three attacks from this creature. Cool. <clears throat> yeah, the I'm one, going down after this next one. The one next to okay. bear is... Well, actually, we'll, we'll finish you here. We'll do this one. Yeah. Uh, let's do the first attack. It rolled really hot on the attack roll, so that was the key last time. So like right now, I just rolled a 10. So that's not going to hit Okay. You. Uh, the second attack is going to get it. And oh. that's 20. Oh, jeez. Oh, okay. So here's the damage for the nat 20. It's going to be a total of 18. Oh, All right, man. yeah, that drops me. Okay. Um, I do have Relentless Endurance, so when I'm reduced to zero HP but not oh. killed... You that's awesome. So. You're half-orc. That's right. Yeah. Oh man, Cecil just looks at you and he, he like he does that like nod, the up nod. He's like <laughs> half orcs. <laughs> half orcs, right? And he's like raising his spear, attacking. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. So you and uh you, you don't go down. You're still you're still standing. At um, one HP, man. <laughs> yeah. Since it I, didn't I pop back up. Yeah. Since it didn't get both of its claws into you, it cannot come in for the bite. Right. So. Okay. All right, that's the end of its turn. Now the one on Bear. Um, it's going to actually leave you, Bear, as it goes to attack um, Mama Naomi. You can Ooh, attack of opportunity. Attack opportunity. Yep, both of you can take an attack if you have a reaction still. Oh, slice them up. Let's slice go. and dice. Oh, yeah, I might be jinxing it. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, 17. I, I didn't do it, but go for it. Ooh, go okay. ahead, Bear. We do nine damage to that one. And that's enough to kill it. Let's go. <gasps> you strike it down as it goes to attack the baby, uh, baby Nell, or baby Nell, little child Nell. Don't hurt kids, you monster! Chop, <laughs> chop them through the spine. 
I, Steph, I'm I'm amazed you're still up, but you're still up. That the creatures are done. We go to your turn. My turn. Okay. So <laughs> I am going to. Um, well, I'm gonna start swinging at um, the one that's above me. I think that one already has damage from being it trapped in the earth. Yeah, the only one that's not damaged is this one on the left. Yeah. So I'm going to do the one that's above me though, because I have to go with. I'm gonna try and knock him down completely. That is 17 with the long sword. Yeah. And that's gonna be eight plus my d6, um, because I'm still large. So that is 17 damage to him. This one, right? Yes. Okay, he's bloodied. Okay, and then I'm going to do. Uh, um, I can do an oh, I can do two turns plus an additional thing. So I'm going to do another one on him. Long sword. That is a 15. Mhm. Mm um, and that does nine damage to him. We'll also kill it. Okay, awesome. Now instead of going after this other one, I'm going to do my second wind. Um, because I can do an action surge and get myself back up to more than one hit point. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, second wind or action surge? Well, I was going to do second wind. Oh, it's a bonus action, so I don't have to do action surge. Yeah, you I don't. I can't do both. But you could do, you could do both. Oh, I could do both? Okay. Yeah. Then I'm going to do both. Let me do second wind first yeah. just to get those because that's where I'm, Oh, that was not good. You do add your, HP. yeah. So you do add your fire. So that's a that's a that could be a hit. It could save you. That gets me up. Yeah, uh, not with the way you're hitting me, man. That's true. Uh, <laughs> which is fine. We're, we'll we'll maybe survive. And then action surge, and I'm going to hit the other one with my long sword again. Lay into him. That'll nice. hit with a tw non natural twenty. That'll do. And that is five ten. So that's ten slashing damage. Very nice. Very nice. I think. Give me one second. Let me just read one more thing. You get a full attack action. You get to attack your two attacks. Oh, I can do two attacks. Okay. That's what I was trying to read. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so that, that's 18. That will also hit. And that'll be 12 slashing damage. Okay, great. So. Um, yeah, we'll do... Is that it for your turn? You did bonus. That's, you yep, did, that's yeah. everything. Cecil will also spring into action coming to your aid. Uh, he's going to use the aid action on this creature, so the next person to attack it will have advantage on the roll. He's my bro, my half-orc bro. Yes. bro. That's it. <laughs> my uh, ho-bro. That's... There we go. Ho-bro, <laughs> half-orc bro. Ho-bro. I like it. Um, Cecil's done, and then we go to Azula. You're up. Finish him. Finish him. Azula. Did you freeze, Christian? I think he froze, didn't he? Nope. Oh, no. Christian, mm -hmm. you there? Christian. Christian. He may just be falling asleep. Sort He's muted. I'm here. <laughs> no, you're that muted. That was so weird. That was so weird. It was like sound cut out on me for a second. Yeah, because we can see <laughs> you moving, but the, you, you were just like looking at the screen. Like, that was so strange. Yeah. I was like, what is happening? All right, so okay. we can hear you now. Your can turn. you all hear me? Yeah, okay, just to yeah. give you a heads up, in the last turn, Bork just borked a whole bunch of these creatures <laughs> uh, using action surge and then second wind. And then Cecil came up and did the aid action onto the last of the creatures. So you have advantage to attack it if you do. If you do. Sweet. Okay. Yeah. Here You're we up. go. Firebolt at it. Firebolt? Okay, good. Uh, did that not rule? It might be coming. Did you see it? There we go. Oh, hey! Don't even need advantage because you have a nat 20. Roll your damage. Go to that. Nice. Oh, that takes, so 14? Is it? It does. It, it takes roll? every. Okay. It, no, no, it's a. Sorry, it's 22. Oh, it's 8 plus the 14. Got it. Yeah, you can look actually to see um, the numbers, and the first roll is your standard 2d10, and the yep. crit is the 7 and 7s it rolled, so. Got it. Yeah. Um, that actually cool. kills the last of these creatures. Um, they'll become to know, you'll come to know them as the Eternal Scions. No longer eternal. Wow. All right. So that's the end of the combat, everybody. Woo. We survived. 
Man, Bork, you were a machine. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> that was yeah. awesome. I offer Bork a fist bump. A fist bump him back is a little not too hard, though, because I'm very large right now. I am still large. <laughs> Thank you. Very gentle. <laughs> Um, so and I Naomi. take some uh, time to start clearing away the difficult terrain. Yeah, uh, you, well, I think actually you might not be able to, right? It just messed up the ground is all it is. Yeah, I think I have to use a... Uh, each five-foot square portion of the area requires at least one minute to clear. <laughs> okay, so then we'll, we won't have time for that because right yeah. now, in the moment, you have Naomi and her daughter Nell reaching out towards this spectral figure. The ghost will, again... Look down towards the girl. Reach out its hand, and once it does, Naomi almost like almost like touch almost like ET touching fingers basically is able to give this creature some solace. The ghost, seeing all the slain scions around it, smiles. Not in a creepy way. Smiles in like a restful, peaceful way. The creature touches Nell's finger. And then you can see the ghostly apparition start to dissipate slowly as her her, her uh, spirit is put to rest. Now, Nell, on the other hand, also looks relieved. But she's like, feels her, you can like see her looking at her hand as after it touched it. This looks fine to you, like nothing out of the ordinary. It looks like her normal hand, but she looks at it and she can almost like looks up into the air and is looking around as if she's following something. You can't see it, though. But then she puts her hand to her chest and her doll and says, She's happy now, Mommy. She's happy now. Um, Nell will clutch her tight. Eli excuse me, uh, not Nell. Naomi will clutch her tight. And in walks Victor. He's awakened. And he comes in, and they're all reunited. And he says to you all, What happened? Uh, I think I think your wife can explain, and your daughter is pretty creepy, so I think I'm ready to get out of here. <laughs> They'll agree. Victor will look to his wife, and he's like, you've got a mean right hook, honey. And she's like, I know, I know. Well, we could talk about it upstairs in the inn. And you head out, and Cecil looks to all of you, and he says, I really am sorry about all of this. Your rooms will all be free, and uh, breakfast tomorrow is on me. Pancakes? Anyone? Pancakes? Uh, make mine a waffle. I need I need more of those syrup containers while I eat it. You'll head upstairs and uh, both Victor and Naomi will tell you exactly what they know. Uh, they know that Victor, Victor will say that back uh, from their uh, research, the woman name was Eliza. Eliza was again, abducted by this cult called the Eternal Scions, and that they were trying to gain favor of the god of death. They thought that by following these rituals that they had purchased from a soothsayer, they would have been giving themselves eternal life in the form of a vampire. But it seems as though the god has just laughed at their attempt and turned them into whatever creatures they were buried beneath the packed dirt. Or at least that's what the rumors had said. They'll thank you for um, for your efforts in saving both their daughter and then ending this curse. Um, Cecil will give you any of the treasure that's down below in, this, in the cistern. There were some treasure chests. They were trapped, as Nell had said. Not Nell. Naomi. I keep getting those two names. The two end names. Naomi said that there were some traps. They just left the treasure, but with careful inspection and, you know, obviously bringing them back up to the top and disarming them, you'll find uh, about 1,500 gold. And oh, wow. Yeah. It's a decent amount of gold in terms of jewels and all those other things. <coughs> um, it seems only fair that uh, Cecil split that with you. He's willing to give the group uh, a thousand of it, if that's enough for you. That's pretty fair. So you can split that thousand between the group, and then there's also one item that Cecil has no need for. Within one of the chests was a magical item. And I'll tell you what it is. I forget the name of it right now, but it's here. 
I believe it was some sort of a bracer. The bracer that you saw in the um, the cavern, the, the chasm. I don't think anybody wants a chance going to get that, do you? If you no, want that, to. That yeah, I was, crazy. yeah, I was going to say. But uh, there is something in one of the chests, and I'm going to find it for you in a second. But that's going to bring us to the end of the adventure, everybody. That is Beneath the Black Rose by the Arcane Library. Any questions or other follow-up from you all? Um, can I get Cecil's number as backup for, like, next time? That guy's a <laughs> He was awesome. Yeah, he took, like, a javelin <laughs> through the shoulder and still came through. Man. Honorary yeah. party member for all future <laughs> sessions. Actually, he's a beast. I actually, uh, just when, you know, we knew we weren't going to have Andrew and we weren't going to have Steve, I was like, let me just do a couple things to modify a bit. I didn't do much. So if anybody's watching at home, I really didn't do much. But I did cut the hit points of enemies um, by half. I figured that would be fair just because it's half a party, basically. Um, but Cecil normally has a hundred and like 150 hit points. Wow. Um, that's awesome. <laughs> that's amazing. He adds two damage dice to whatever he's using for damage. So that's why the stool's an improvised weapon. I gave it a <laughs> D4 for the damage. He was rolling three D4 with his stool. That's amazing. Yeah. He's three like D4 a... and he got 12? No, he got more than that on you sometimes, didn't he? But he has a strength of 20. Oh, my So he's adding God. plus five to his rolls. <laughs> wow. Dang. Yeah, that's crazy. So when you got him to like 50 hit points, I was like, okay, that's when the ghost will will uh, leave him because he's, you know, half his hit points. He's just 75. When it gets to like that, like, you know, 25 point range, that's when the ghost will leave him. That's what I figured. But, um, but yeah, he's a beast. He's normally a beast. Uh, but anyway, yeah. Any other thoughts on this adventure? It's that was fun. really cool. Yeah. 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 And it's a cool. Nice quick one. Yeah, it's quick, but it's also cool because it's like, it could be anywhere. Like, if this is not part of a supernatural game, it could just be like, you're staying at an inn. And yeah. This happens that night. It's just wrong place, wrong time sort of thing. Um, Creepy but yeah, so and I, cool. Yeah. Tell me tell me if uh, if I missed anything and you have any other questions, but I think that's it. Um, I found the, the, uh, the treasure here. Uh, it's a ring. It looks like a ring of feather falling. Oh. There you go. A ring of feather falls. The other, the other uh, thing in here. And if I'm missing anything, I'll, I'll let you know in between our sessions. But thank you for playing tonight. And I think uh, it was good to get Supernatural Twenty back. We'll be back soon with some more adventures. Yeah. No, this was fun. This is good. Good to see everyone again. Yeah. Sure. For real. Feels good to be back. And it'll be good to have Steve and Andrew back for the next one. Uh, Blackers. <laughs> but until then. <laughs> We, uh, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you all on the tabletop. Have a great night, everybody. Bye.